fun. Um, so TJ Kirk, the amazing atheist. Pronouns. Pronouns? He, she, they, them, zer, it. Any all? Any all good? Any all, Any, all everything. Yeah. I don't Hell care. Yeah. It's all good. Based. Don't even think of me as a sentient being. Just yeah. a bad also, take machine. Also legitimate. Also a, a legitimate <laughs> position. You would not be the first person to uh, visualize their self identity that way, which we respect yeah. completely. So, so uh, come on and uh, this is like one third um, blackface. Oh, I figure that's still acceptable, right? Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think you're good. Yeah. It's got I, I I read it as like, you know, uh like a Furiosa kind of thing from Mad Max. Right. So yeah. I was thinking like Road Warrior. But I mean I guess that's a way to do it. That's a way to interpret it. I'm sure I mean, I think everyone who does I think, you know, she was in one third blackface, right? Me? I was? No, uh Furiosa. Furiosa? Oh, I was gonna say I did red I did red paint the other day, but yeah, Furious, I guess she was. I guess that is a way of interpreting this. That's thing. red face, right? Yeah, red face. I That's guess. like insulting the Native Americans. I don't know. I suppose it is to some people. I suppose it would be, depending <laughs> on the context, right? I've been accused of many things in the past. I don't I don't think that I tend to dabble in that type of uh in that type of stuff. Uh most of the cancellations that people have made on that front have been uh pretty um Pretty low. I heard, uh, I was on Twitter and I saw that you were, uh, people were saying you sound like a super villain. So, I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. People, people def, I mean, and I'm guilty as charged there. Uh, I, I give incredible speeches. It's not my fault that throughout, uh, all of cinematic <laughs> history that villains are given the best speeches. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not right my fault. because they always have an actually compelling case, right? The villain <laughs> always actually has something compelling, like, Society must change, and here's why. But the hero's just like, no, because goodness. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's right, like it's well. like well, some of it I think you know comes from that 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 code. You know the the comics code and the uh, the Hayes Hayes code Hayes code. Yeah, the Hayes code say. and the twenty. Yeah, the Hayes code. Robin Stygap is turning young boys gay. Exactly. That was, uh, yeah, that kind of shit. We've talked about that a lot on this channel. In fact, that's something former we uh, about Nazi guy that was. Uh, well, behind that for, former Nazi, right? Yeah, yeah. Former. That was uh Always behind the whole comics code authority thing. Oh, the yeah. Hayes code. Right? Yeah, the what? Hayes code and the, the, the comics code. code I'm thinking I'm confusing I'm confusing the comics code authority and the Hayes code, but it's like whatever. ESRB, every censorship organization pretty much. Same spirit same behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh they run with the basically the same ideas. Yeah, that's something that that's something that I'm I'm very critical of. I tend to be uh very critical of of uh these these big moral panics that uh, often just end up mysteriously always destroying the careers of a bunch of queer people who happen to write something uh, into their stories that is true to their experience of life um, or, uh -oh. or their own like we got some communism over here <laughs> yeah exactly I mean it's funny because I mean in in some cases like with the Hayes Code that was like uh, essentially codified in that like you could not have a gay character be a good character you know so yeah there goes those there's there's why you get those vi inspiring social justice villain speeches that then at the it end sucks say because there's a lot of a uh, great pre Hayes um pre-code films like mm -hmm. in the 30s that are actually like really cool and not to say there wasn't any cool shit made under the code there was oh yeah there was and you course. know luckily censors tend to be really stupid so you can sneak a lot of shit by, by them yeah, there's an old Western. I can't remember the name of it, but there's like a whole big long scene where there's these two cowboys like shooting their gun. And it's pretty obvious that they're like talking about gay sex the whole time. I can't remember what the fucking movie was. Yeah, um, it's but, it's you know. remarkably uh, it's actually there's there's so much. It's very weird when it happens when uh, when you discover or are able to watch like a a uh, a film or or, a, or or see a comic or whatever that is like uh would contain what we would call progressive now, but from like a hundred years ago. One such example is, of course, um, I did a, some time ago, I did this uh, show called History Mama, where uh, once in a while I, I like talk about something in history. And, and in June for Pride Month, I did three History Mamas all about uh, pieces of queer history that a lot of people don't know anything about. One of them was to talk about Magnus Hirschfeld, um, who uh, was a doctor who was like the first like trans friendly doctor in the world. Um, and was also himself uh, gay. And he made a film uh, in Germany that was, in, you know, meant to be art that was 
accurately and, and lovingly depicting gay people because there was such social bias against gay people in Germany at the time. Of course, uh, this was leading up to World War II. Um, and many, many copies of it have been destroyed. Very recently, uh, more of it was discovered, a, a co an undis previously undiscovered copy, and we were able to watch some of it on the stream, and it's, it's breathtaking when you see, like, oh, like, these stories really aren't new. They were just squeezed out of obviousness for a very long time. They were either destroyed or legislated via the Hays Code so that you have to get to... to uh, that people have to dance and make weird references that that disappear, you know, that stop losing their meaning over time. And, yeah, it's unfortunate, but I'm glad to see that there are. Yeah, on my uh, podcast, Deep Fat Fried, we've done a couple of episodes about uh, trans trailblazers and sort of the like contributions of uh, trans people that yeah. have, they've made throughout history that have been sort of like buried. Uh, there's also a lot of great stuff we've done about uh, like early labor leaders that, you know, you're just not taught in the history books, but it's important to learn about fucking <laughs> George yeah. Washington chop down the cherry tree. And yeah, the, 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 daddy, the silly myths you know, that, that, that a get thousand like times over. <laughs> yeah. Or like, or like whatever weird stories that you get in like kindergarten about like, Oh yeah, this is how Thanksgiving definitely went down. There was definitely one single Thanksgiving event and everybody got along and it was all good because, you know, benevolent, you know, benevolent white savior stuff. Like, yeah, you get that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wild. It's wild how much, uh, you can sort of catch in, in the biases that are present in any system by just by looking at what's fixated on. And, and American history is, is a topic that we, especially in the schools is something we talk about quite a lot over here. Uh, it's like American say, mythology though. It is. Yeah. Like what you're actually taught in school. So you're familiar. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're familiar with that whole, like uh, the, the 1776 project that Trump tried to pull. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was uh we covered that. Like we went and read into some of that, like live on, on stream, like back when that was all in the news. And that is exactly what you're talking about. It's just a more blatant form of it. But the mythologizing is well, so present there's in a, education. There's a book, and I'm sure you've probably read it or at least heard of it, with um, um, People's History of the United States, right? I have, and there yes. Was a, uh, there was a uh, conservative counter-narrative book that was published uh, a few years ago. It was uh, A Patriot's History of the United States. Mm. And it's just basically like 100%. I and mean, it's basically the... Er the proto form of the 1776 project. It's just like every yeah. time someone tries to tell the actual history um, from all of these like unique perspectives that are completely filtered out by mainstream hi history curriculums in the United States, at least on the elementary and high school levels. Yeah. Um, you know, someone ha they have to counteract. Oh, well, no, no, no. See, Oh, it wasn't like that. It was, uh, it's actually everything in the founding myth is true. It turns out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, oh, this well, was okay. What about all these sources or... and stuff? Well, uh, you know, yeah, those, were, those sources were, they were communists or, or they had ties to somebody who was unsavory. So we'll just do a character assassination and then brush them under the rug. And look, a lot and... of the stuff you hear negative about Christopher Columbus is because, you know, he had a lot of enemies, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He <laughs> his definitely political rivals telling uh, lies. his political rivals who weren't political. They were, they were political rivals for very, very unlogical, fa you know, feelings over facts reasons. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, speaking of Christopher Columbus, there was a, a, a just a horrible, like, I think it was PragerU that put it out. PragerU put out this, like, Christopher Columbus, uh, like, unfathomably racist. I can't even believe that, that like, this stuff stays up on YouTube. Uh, like, Christopher Columbus thing, which was basically that. It was like, yeah, it's mostly just, you know, the, the uh, – Age of Exploration era SJWs were the ones who 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 put out this narrative that Christopher Columbus was bad. He just wanted to he just wanted to get gold so he could be a strong independent businessman. I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck is going on here? It's very weird. The historical revisionism thing is like half of like the conservative like of like the conservative political bubble on the internet these days is just like spending time just lying about history and trying to make it seem like oh yeah no the you know the the civil war wasn't about slavery is another one like oh yeah definitely totally there was not nobody cared about slavery about that event it was all just you know the war of northern aggression kind of stuff yeah it's <laughs> it's it's infuriating there's so much you know, i always learn uh, about misinfo. like civil war stuff is like you know, they're, they're like, oh, you know, it was the Democrats that did the the uh, slavery stuff. And oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, OK, but it's like literally all those southern states that were that that still proudly fly the Confederate flag all over the place. 
Although I guess I do see less of that. I do live in the South. Yeah. I see less um, of that than I used to, but there's still plenty of that going on. And like, it's like, well, they aren't Democrats. Like, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not Democrats. <laughs> they're not weird. big Democratic Party loyalists. I don't, you don't see too many, you know, Hillary Clinton stickers next to Confederate flag stickers. Uh, you know. Yeah, you don't. I'll, I will say uh, lately, uh, now I live up in, in, you know, the Pacific Northwest. I live in Seattle. Um, right. And so, you know, we don't really get as much of the uh, of the Confederate flags. I saw a lot more of that when I lived in Florida um, and stuff like that. But one thing we have seen a huge uh, upsurge in is those Blue Lives ma Matter or Blue Lives. Oh, the thin God. blue line, yeah, the thin everywhere. blue line. Yeah, the uh, the, bli the flag. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. I that 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 thing is like the worst. I I, I like I would almost prefer I would almost prefer to see a Confederate flag at this point because at least right, they because would at have, least. Yeah, like at they're, least they're kind of like it's a myth in their a lot of their minds is like heritage, not hate. They mythologize yeah, yeah. it. They lie to themselves about it. But like of thin course. blue line, that's like a current event. You know, they're, it's, they're you know you know exactly what they mean there. It's not just a, it's not even it's not even just a matter of it being the current event. It's the literal imagery. The imagery is a a blue line that separates white from black on a black and white American flag that represents the the. the actual imagery is like is like oh yeah the police are are the 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 line between order and barbarian and like barbarianism it's so it is like the most fascist flag you could possibly come up with just and so racist just condensed into a thing and then people slap that on their car and i'm just like wow walking red flag walking red flag oh my god i i i just like i see that shit and i go i will never trust somebody who's got one of those flags that is just such a it tells so much about your psychology that you would display a flag oh, i see them all over the place that's terrible I see them all everywhere. over it's very yeah. unfortunate i i i'm I, drowning in them out here yeah it's i wonder if it uh i wonder if they think it's like uh i wonder if people put it on because they think the cops will be nice to them. <laughs> in our yeah, area like, it's like nobody wants to even get this pulled ought up. to this ought to take care of that speeding ticket yeah, like, yeah. Right. Did you, you, just, you saw the flag, right? So you can forget about this DUI when I wrap my uh, bends around the fucking telephone pole. I wonder if uh, anyone's ever got a ticket and then ripped the fucking bumper sticker off. Fuck them, then. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> I'm mind. taking it back. I'm put. I'm getting the. I'm going to go get the firefighter one. Uh, listen, somebody talk to me about that. I think that the thin red line is cooler than the thin blue line because what are they standing between? They're standing between people and fire. And we can agree that fire does burn people. Uh, so someone said, uh, I once saw a retired cop car with a blue lives matter bumper sticker sticker. And the drivers were two black guys who were smoking pot. It was amazing camouflage. That is ingenious tier. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you will be threatening everyone around. No one's even going to come nearby. That's great. I like that. Impressive. Impressive. <sighs> Yeah, so uh, welcome once again. We didn't get to do a full introduction. Do you want to just give yourself an introduction? I'm sure everyone here knows you, uh, um, <laughs> judging hey, by how yeah, excited um, you I'm TJ, uh, the Amazing Atheist, uh, YouTube degenerate asshole, been on YouTube for 6,472 years and counting. Impressive. Um, I do a podcast called Deep Fat Fried. That's on YouTube. That's also on Spotify and iTunes and other places. We do those shows every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. We have a live show every Wednesday. We do a patrons only show every Friday. I also have my channel. I haven't been doing a whole lot on it. Uh, I haven't been doing a whole lot on the Amazing Atheist channel lately because I've been trying to write a fucking novel. Oh shit! So I don't have, so I don't have a shit ton of time to write to to work on that stuff. But I do post videos on there. Yeah, I try to get. I've been trying to do weekly, but it's been a little bit more like every other week. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, I also do live streams on uh, the TJ Does Life channel, which is uh, what I'm simul, which is what I'm streaming this to right now. Hell yeah! Hello. Um, and um, yeah, you want to introduce Sick. yourself to the people watching on my stream? Absolutely. My name is Demon Mama. Uh, I uh, use uh, she/her pronouns, um, and I am a political edutainer uh, on on YouTube mostly. I also stream on Twitch. I talk about gender, politics, uh, religion very frequently. I also talk about uh, video games, which I love a lot. 
um, and movies from time to time when I have time to watch them. Um, yeah, uh, I tend to get, uh, I kind of have a reputation on the internet. Uh, don't believe a single thing you hear about me. Just, just, uh, if you want the proof, you can just come, come say hello to me. I've, uh, I've been, there are many, many rumors, dark rumors and light rumors indeed. But, uh, but yeah, come <laughs> check out my stuff. We have a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I, I genuinely think that I'm, I'm bringing some of the funnest content to this side of the internet in a long time. So come check it out. Uh, you can find all my links at demonmama.com. That's where I do everything. I stream four times a week, more or less. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, we have a lot of fun. We talk about religion and stuff a lot. We watch funny videos. I do react and I talk about media. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, coming on, and I'm I'm super excited. And thank you for having me on your show, uh, simul streaming and and whatever. It's been I've been really really excited to sit down and get to talk with you and stuff. So yeah, cool. So so, so yeah, uh, yeah. What so 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 what do you what would you say your main focus these days is as far as topics? What do you what do you like to, to like talk about most frequently these days? Because I know in the past, I mean, the amazing atheist is in the name. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I went through the atheism phase. I went through the anti-SJW phase. I went through sort of a more lefty political phase. And I guess I'm still kind of in that. But, uh, you know, what I'm mostly focused on at this point is, um, you know, Deep Fat Fried, our podcast. Um, so, and that really doesn't have any sort of limitations in terms of what we talk about or cover. We have That's a awesome. news show that we do every Wednesday where we just kind of like yammer about current events from a very like stonery perspective. And, um, as far as our topic show topic though, we could do an episode on fucking paper clips one day, trans activism the next day. And, um, you know, uh, some sort of obscure historical event the next, you know, it's just like any topic. I don't care. That's we'll awesome. Just, we, it's basically just try to riff on everything, try to like talk about everything. Yeah, um, variety show. Good stuff. Right. And it's just like supposed to be like a show that's uh, attempting to educate people from the perspective of three uneducated people who are trying to trying to figure out what the hell they're even going over as they're going over it. I mean, so. I think that's that can be very valuable. Like, I think one of the things that, you know, people are missing on the Internet a lot of times is like conversational spaces where like it's there's a lot of like political debate there's a lot of like uh of like sort of talking head stuff you know uh stuff even i do where it's like i'm telling you my political take on a thing but it's really cool to like have uh, in my opinion like like panels or podcasts where you get a couple of different people's perspective on an issue and it encourages almost encourages the audience to ask their own questions and i think that stuff is great um i, I like to hear that you're that you're into the the, the educational portion too because i mean i i brand myself as an a, a political edutainer i'm not a i'm not you know the go-to wikipedia expert i'm not gonna be able to tell you everything about every issue but what i like to sort of see my role as is like i find interesting things to to give people a seed for you know here's a seed of information go pers if this is something that's fascinating to you like it was to me let's go read more let's go find out more together let's let's encourage each other to uh to like dig in deeper and 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 uh and find out more and and learn what we can and of course i talk very you know I, I tend to get really opinionated about politics sometimes, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's what politics are for. So get super opinionated about and get, yeah. like, very angry and scream at people. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I feel like that's what it ends up being a lot of times. And sometimes that's fun. I think sometimes it's cool, though, to see, like, people work out shit you know what i mean like even if it's in real time a lot of times what ends up happening is people are very dug into a specific position and even if you even in conversations where people are pretty uh well rooted in their position i think that you can have a more interesting discussion by being willing to like ask questions and and not just uh engage in in pure partisanship but of course that's a two-way street so sometimes it just doesn't happen yeah um, yeah, as I, I don't know when I feel when I'm dealing with like conservative like family members or something like that. I just kind of like <laughs> I don't I, you can I can because you know what I already I've just been down the road where I was like, all right, I'm going to stand up for my beliefs and I'm just going to like ask them pointed questions and like get them thing. And like, you know what? Sometimes it'll get them really pat, pissed off. And sometimes they'll be like, you know what? That's a good point. But no matter what, uh, I know that uh, next time I talk to them, I'll be right back to the same fucking old thing because yeah, <laughs> they're they're gonna fucking be right back to the you know OAN Fox News talk radio 
whatever the hell. It's bad. They're the chosen. State is bad. They're yeah. chosen. Cho- chosen brainwashing fucking apparatus. They're gonna go find it, seek it out, get it to coddle them back into whatever they thought before. So, you know, at it's this funny, point, I just kind of like, I just kind of like nod and eh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I get I have uh, like some conservative sure. family members like, oh, you know, these fucking Haitians are going to come. They're, these Haitians are coming in. The Haitians, the Haitians. I'm like, wow, of all the actual problems in the world, you've decided to be concerned about this fucking nonsense, huh? Cool. Yeah. It's isn't like, wow, this funny is, how, this like, is what's going to, this is our problem in America. Haitians. Okay. Yeah. The cycle Literally is every so fucking short. Haitian could move into this country and it wouldn't make fucking much of a goddamn difference. So. Nobody would even notice. It's, it's We have too, so much land. Nobody would even... You put them in Wyoming or something? Yeah. Nobody would notice. I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is, that's happened in the past. In my in my home state that I grew up on, there was a... a uh, sometime in the like early 2000s, there was like a huge uh, deal that was made with like Somalia and a bunch of Somalian refugees came and lived in the state in one city. Nobody even cared because, of course, this was like, you know, this was like previous to 9-11 that this that this process began. So nobody cared. Like there wasn't that same level of fixation. Of course, there's always been like anti-immigrant sentiment in the United States. But it's like it's taken on such a fever pitch that like now it's like, oh, my God, there's like, of course, you get like you mentioned, there's there's the Fox News, the OAN with these like shout boxes of just constant exaggeration i mean we were watching trump a couple like trump doing some random speech where he's talking about like legions of people like invading our shores it's like dude what do you what world do you live in it's like it sounds like they're reading from a fantasy novel it's not even accurate like you can't even get a horde of people from a country that has as small of a population as, as haiti and has been through as much shit as haiti has had to deal with a lot of which is our fault right and i don't even like, know how to fucking i don't even know how to engage with that sort of thing when someone says that to me because it's like you know if you were like if you and i were working off of the same facts and we just had different opinions about the facts that would be one thing we could actually have some sort of discussion and maybe try to figure something out between us but when you come at me with some fantasy land take that has no bearing on reality i don't even it's like all right well yeah. You're delusional. I don't even know what to fucking say beyond that. It becomes incredibly difficult to have some of these conversations. Uh, we were talking about that earlier with uh, some some drama that happened today on Twitter. Uh, some post about uh, you may have heard. I love about Twitter this, drama. The the the, the, pu- the puppy Fauci. The Fauci puppy. Oh puppy. yeah. Did you hear about that already? Yeah. So- yeah, because all I saw a bunch of conservatives all of a sudden are like, you know what I care about now? Just out of the fucking blue, right? Just now, animal cruelty. <laughs> like what? Yeah. We were laughing about that. I'm like, guys, hold on. Let's let's take a second here. I'm like, let's sit down for just a minute. And let me just tell you what goes on every single day in America by the thousand fold. You know, I go through the sort of the just just your basic conditions in a in a pig factory farm, which is how the bacon gets to your to your uh, your grocery store every single day. And you never hear a conservative saying that. But when they can find another wedge to try and convince you to not take a vaccine or (laughs) or keep your masks off or whatever. They're like, oh, the puppies in North in North Africa. You don't even. <laughs> I mean, you don't even hear them talk about other fucking medical tests on animals yeah. or like cosmetics or anything. It's like, None hey, wait, it. what? It's just like, yeah, oh yeah, they were. Then, making- oh wait, now all of a sudden, oh my god, we care about this so fucking deep, you guys. Look how deep going. we care. Oh my god, Fauci killed them puppies, y'all. Yeah, like, and right. I don't even know. Like the thing is, like reading it, I was talking to my chat. I'm like. Guys, doesn't this kind of feel like when you get like it feels like they're talking in code like you're like, OK, so this is like Fauci. Yeah. OK, so they don't like Fauci. They don't like Fauci. And so Fauci becomes like a, a general like don't trust the science kind of thing. But then Fauci is connected to this to this puppy thing via funding that was done under his Pres- allegedly under his watch to a North African science lab that actually did the research. And it's like, so w- does the lab even exist? First of all, what was the actual experiment? How is this actually tied to Fauci? And how do you end up getting to the point of it being an anti-mask message, which is what it is at the end. And I'm just like, this feels like, again, like you said, it's like you're talking to somebody who exists in a different world. I, you, you, you don't know what all these, these things are. Like it happened with the Hunter's Biden's, Hunter Biden's laptop thing. Do you remember that? Where it was like, there was like a period of time on the internet where every time you would see a tweet from a conservative, it would be like three Russian names or, or like three Ukrainian names. And then they would be like, this is how you know that 
Big J is Joe Biden in this email that was sent to 26 people, one of whom was was Hunter Biden. And it's just like, okay, I can't keep up with the lore anymore. I don't know what is what what led to this or why this is in my face now. It sounds like you're talking about uh, you ever um, Star Wars. You ever read one of those? Uh, you ever read one of those uh, books? Those like choose your own adventure books? Yes, I used it's to like those. that. Yeah, you know, you just like they get to a certain page. It's like, all right. You know, for Fauci to be an animal torturer, turn to page 78. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, okay, yeah, animal torture. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, look, they give us an option for him to be ahead of the cabal. Oh, man, let's go to that page. It's like, oh, damn it, I died. Oh, let's go back a page. I mean, that was something that happened, too. It's like, it's funny that you say it's like a, a choose your own adventure. It really is. It's like, there are times where, like, uh, like we were earlier this year, or, or, oh, God, it was last year at the beginning when, we, when the whole pandemic thing was first breaking out. Um, like we were, sh we we watched this video that showed the dates and the the statement side by side of what Sean Hannity was saying, like on his show about like the level of it being a hoax versus when they would have to pull away from the hoax language. And it really is. It's just like pay flipping back. Ah, I don't like that result, so we're gonna we're gonna change back here. And they rely on like, on like complete amnesia it's like it goes out their ear after the episodes like do how do you not watch you, this show and like catch that like the guy just over the course of two days from the lap from you watched him two days ago and he said the opposite thing of what he's saying now and that doesn't piss you off i don't know i don't get it i don't know how they're so effective maybe it's just because there's no there's no care i just I don't know well because it's like there is it, it's just a matter of how it's all from, con here's the conclusion. We know the conclusion. Mm -hmm. We love the conclusion. What do we have to say to justify that conclusion in any given moment, yeah, right? The, the and if you look at it like that, it makes perfect sense. It's just like, yeah. here's our conclusion. We've arrived at it. It's the first thing we did. Now here's whatever supporting evidence we can find. And anything that's against the conclusion is a lie. And it's for the conclusion is the truth. And, and that's what, to just swap that's, it out that's the, the most brilliant contribution of, uh, of Trump was fake news fake news it's like there's a pro-trump restaurant somewhere in florida i think that whenever there's a negative review of their restaurant they say fake review fake review could be the most it could be a totally re legit review where someone's like you know almost almost conservative as any man and i went in here and i gotta say it's some of the most piss poor spaghetti i ever had and they'd be like fake review fake, fake review, review. Fake i don't care yeah, it is wild too, cause like you saw that. I don't know, like some some stuff I feel is like is like fallen off it, of the, out of the public mind, which is like I, I'm gonna have to go back and like, and 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 I feel like I remember this because it's something that I had to cover, and you probably remember it because you probably talked about it at the time. But a lot of people forget about like like remember it at, at at the January 6th thing where like one of the main things that happened was like these this crowd of people like gathered up cameras of media crews and just smashed them out of like general journalistic like hate for journalist the idea of journalism they were just like yeah we're gonna fuck up all your cameras like who cares whether you're like on our side or not we don't care it's like you are you are filming this you're representing this nah we can't have that we don't want any clarity on any of this it's such a weird weaponization that starts with something so small like like trump being like fake news media and he still does it now at his speeches he'll be like those guys in the back the, the cameras they're the enemies and i'm just like what the fuck it's <laughs> uh, like i mean i know it's like it's like the fascism 101 thing right like because because of course they always hate the media it's the same thing it's happened all throughout time anybody who can threaten them by reporting on them they hate but come on it's still so weird to see in real time it's such a an, an uncanny thing to watch and watch how it just goes immediately. The moment that there's like a big fervor and they all get together in one place with their, their TP USA pins and their, their, uh, embarrassing polo proud boy shirts. And they just immediately go to town on the fucking media because it's like, Oh, those are the people who could, who could expose us for being, you know, uh, horrific anti-democratic, uh, inhumane racists. It's very frustrating. Yeah, it was. Uh, I saw a, a tweet from um, AOC, I guess, uh, yeah. yesterday or the day before after the Rolling Stone story broke about how you know the so many mainstream Republican politicians had colluded with the mm -hmm. Capitol rioters and stuff and helped plan the riot. Um, and it was like she was like, "Well, you know, all these members should be expelled." And I was, <laughs> I I wrote it out like so many tweets that I write out. I didn't. I didn't actually. I looked at it. I was like, eh. I was like, you know, people say AOC is smart, but she she misspelled the word hanged here pretty badly. <laughs> like, 
And then I wrote, and then after I deleted that, I was like, all right, that one's no good. What if I just tweeted, hang Trump? <laughs> no, probably can't get away with <laughs> that gonna either. Get, that's going to get taken down. <laughs> but you know, it, 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 you know, you want to talk about a hypocrisy, though. Here's a hypocrisy. Uh, so many people, I've seen them, like, they go on Twitter. There was a guy, I don't remember, it was Todd Starnes or some equally okay. reprehensible fucking sack of shit was on Twitter. And he was like, for every one of the troops that died in Afghanistan... In this uh, withdrawal, in this uh, recent attack, it was during the bombing, during the uh, withdrawal, every one of them, we need to destroy an entire Afghan village. And I'm like, how come, wait, if I was to say, like, let's kill Todd Starnes, I'm bad. But if yeah. he says, let's murder, ev let's genocide people in Afghanistan, it's like, well, that's okay, though. Yeah, interesting so, how they get away with that. And I don't and, know, but then they're censored. Oh, we're so... <laughs> It's funny. It's like, we no. were talking about the censorship thing. Fucking Did pussies. you see that story out of uh, the just was was just launched today? It was uh, reported on. I think the one that we read was from the uh, Associated Press. So it's not like this is some some you know fringe media. United States fake news. Yeah, United fake news. States, United States, Canada, the UK, Germany, France, and Japan. All every every single uh, of the t versions of Twitter in the in those countries all have a significant measurable bias towards right-wing pundits and right-wing journalism in their own algorithms. This is an eternal report by Twitter. Twitter was like, oh shit, our algorithms are promoting right-wing media. And it's like, and they claim they have a bias when like literally it was like, how many, how many years ago was it? Three, four, maybe five at most years ago that like Phil DeFranco had a video, like Phil DeFranco, like sitting here at, at that point, like at the very peak of his, of his popularity, openly reporting on how YouTube was demonstrably suppressing LGBT content. Like they're just like, oh, if we, if we're going to, we have invisible tags. We're going to, if we think that you're talking about LGBT stuff, you're just going to get deboosted in the algorithm. We're not even going to tell you about it. And it's like, we just forget. People just forget that it's like, oh, no, we know which way the bias goes. We know who gets biased against. We know it's anybody who doesn't fit the, the taste of Coca-Cola Corporation, who still, uh, you know, largely subscribe to, at the end of the day, you know, sort of Christian conservative norms to sell their advertisement because they need. Well, to you know what a lot of times is that right wingers are so bad at figuring out where the line is for some goddamn reason. So they just like they're really bad and they just walk right on by it and they're like i'll be censored look how the riot is censored it's like you basically literally were like saying genocide shit whereas like left-wingers are a little smarter so you know when they see that i'm coming up against the line i better not say that they just don't say it well, um yeah it is funny because we've joked about on so i've I've spent a lot of time in like the Twitch panel scene, like doing those panel debates that always end up becoming blood sports and all that. I don't really do them anymore, but I used to. And we used to joke all the time about how there was a conservative affirmative action because uh, it was so hard to find conservatives who could even follow the most basic rules of just general respect. We're not even talking like major rules. Like I, I hate, like I like being able to say my, my little reclamatory slurs. You know, I like to drop my F slurs and my T slurs and I'm trans, I'm gay as fuck. I want to be able to say my slurs, but I get it. You know, if somebody asked me, come on my show, don't do that shit, you know, whatever, fine. These guys couldn't do it. So there would be like four or five conservatives who have like no viewers whatsoever, but they're the only people who can even follow the most basic rules. And like, I think, I think, uh, like, oh my God, I'm trying to remember. There was one that like a dude came on and just straight up dropped the N word. Like, it's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like you just, you just straight up got invited to like a big panel, a panel that's like actually like giving you some sort of platform. And you're so stupid. You can't even avoid saying the N word for the panel and immediately got the VOD taken down. It's just like, dude, like it's so bad. So yeah, there is a lot of that. And then also like, I just think it's like, there's another aspect too, which is just like, I think people underestimate just how repugnant a lot of the like the worldviews of like right wingers really are like, I mean, we could talk about the Crowders who get away with shit to an unbelievable degree, but like Crowder's worldview is disgusting. The things that he engages in and advocates for is disgusting. Not even like the worst lefty you can think of. Adv it does shit like where he, where he does like react videos to Asian faces. And that's the joke is that he's so like, I was, a uh, I was on a network with, um, with Steven Crowder at one point back in like, uh, the network days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a very, there was like a little sub division of, um, I think it was Maker Studios called Polypop. Huh. And um, Steven Crowder was on it and I was on it. And um, we both had the same like rep. So I was, um, 
I made a video. So Steven Crowder, he would not, I've been blocked by him on Twitter, like forever. <laughs> um, he's not like he, cause I made some videos against him like really early on in his career. And he really, it was like before everyone hated his ass, I guess. So he was like, I was one of his first haters. So he was like, yeah, fuck that. Nowadays, he probably wouldn't even fucking blink at it. But at the time, I guess it was like, who, who's this asshole hating on me? Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, he did this thing. I, I think it was this event that precipitated it. I might be getting the actual event wrong because there was a few little exchanges between us. But there was an, a, a, a moment where he um, he was going making the rounds on like Fox News and stuff, claiming that this um, he had been attacked by a, a union guy. Oh, yeah, um, I remember that. That was the right. guy who, uh, that, oh, that video was, ooh, that was a funny video to watch. And then that. I fucking, uh, so I watched the video and stuff, and I'm like, looking at the video, I'm like, something doesn't add up here. Because, mm -hmm. like, you see, this this dude was, like, had fallen down on his front, mm -hmm. and it looked, for me, like, the, the conclusion I drew based on the fucking footage was that Steven Crowder had pushed this dude down while his back was turned. This dude got up and then hit Steven Crowder. Yeah. Um, that seemed to be... Classic. That seemed to be like what the footage suggested. Now, it wasn't 100%, but it, it, was, yeah, it was pretty fucking close to 100%. Anyway, so I put out a video about it, and I'm just like, Steven Crowder's full of shit. He fucking pushed this guy. Um, so anyway, I talked to my Polypop rep like a little bit later, and he's just like, yeah, Steven Crowder says he's going to sue you. I'm like, what? Yeah, he's going to sue you. But he's got, as soon as he's this other lawsuit's done, he's going to sue you too uh, and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, all right, okay. But then uh, his other lawsuit that he had going, the judge pretty much fucking laughed it out of court. And so I never fucking saw nothing about no lawsuit. But apparently there was like some consideration of him suing me for a minute. So that's pretty cool. That's wish he'd actually done it. That would have been fucking good press. I'd be like sued by Steven Crowder. But. Yeah, you're, you're getting censored by by Snowflake Steven. Yeah, he he's he's really bad at navigating that kind of stuff. I'm sure you saw the whole like the whole. It seems like he just gets it seems like he just has like an instant like he just has a get out of jail free card or something, though. So I mean, he's got crazy money backing him. He's got crazy yeah. money and influence. I mean, he's one of the ones that's backed by the uh, the uh, fracking billionaires, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah. can never a hundred percent tell because it's private industry. But 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 yeah, he capes for them constantly. Um, it, it, many of his associates also have associations with them. It's almost guaranteed, like uh, almost guaranteed. And of course, you know, his dad is super super tied into um, to a lot of the uh, like um, early conservative media empire bullshit. So between Fo uh, ties to Fox and ties to Clear Channel, who was like all who are all tied in with Rush Limbaugh and all that, he's got just a million ties to these uh, these right wing entertainment people. And that's why he's able to pull like get away with so much, and also just constantly have uh, a, 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 a basically a bubble around him at all times of people who are just being paid to make his content somehow last, even though he's completely without charisma and and can't land a joke to save his life, and also just you, completely uh, makes up shit. I'll tell you another tweet that I, this has nothing to do with politics, oh, but I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if um if you're like I am, I, I know that you have like sort of a villainous Twitter persona or whatever, but uh, a little bit. there's like pretty, uh, I don't know, like I would say like two or three times a week, I write out a tweet and just kind of look at it for a second. I'm like, eh, no, yeah. you know, and I just like, don't send it. It's hap it happened. Oh man. To me but I had the, the Oh my God. I had to, what I thought anyway, it was like the funniest fucking tweet that I could have done that would have just made people so fucking mad, but I just was not willing to fucking deal with the shit storm. It was going to in uh, incur, but I'll tell you what it was. All right. Let's hear it. Let's hear how bad it you was. Know, you remember how, uh, like I think it was Vincent D'Onofrio or somebody or no, it wasn't Vincent D'Onofrio. I think it was the dude that played Hank on um breaking bad okay, he like yeah. tweeted out uh, like D dean norris yeah i think it was dean norris yeah. anyway it was one of those one of those bald actors he tweeted out some kind of like thing it was clearly meant to be like a porn search but he typed it as like a twitter a tweet instead <laughs> okay yeah so i was like thinking so during the whole like gabby petito thing i was gifts. like yeah <laughs> i was like Gabby Petito rule 34. No! <laughs> I, oh was my like, God. I was like, ah, should, okay, I that is should I press it? 
That I'm is like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Twitter darkness. Okay, <laughs> I look, know. I will say I don't fly. I have not. I don't <sighs> think I've flown that close to the sun yet. Although I have garnered a reputation uh, for making people very mad when uh, supposed American patriots die, because basically every time, oh, uh, when Colin Powell died, we had a a, a bit of a celebration stream uh, for I his didn't even, uh, transformation into I, a ghost. I felt like the oh yeah that was great that he's yeah. gonna like haunt them and so I saw that tweet so I think good. I might have hearted it um yeah. the uh but the fucking um when Colin Powell died I was like should I write like a tweet about this and I just kind of like looked at the screen I was like eh, no I don't really fucking who cares yeah you know I, mean, I didn't I didn't feel like I needed to say like he's a piece of shit I didn't really feel like I needed to say he was a good guy I just like I, mean, I just let his death go unremarked upon. Now, I did have to comment on it when we did Flash Fried on the Wednesday following his death, but um, yeah, but on, on the like day of his death, I just—I didn't even fucking, I didn't even bother with a tweet. Just like, I don't care. I don't even want to fucking talk about this fucking Completely dipshit. Completely valid response. I mean, I think Colin Powell is a piece of shit, and I mean, I will, I will, uh, I will say I have a little bit of a, uh, of a bias given that, like, the Iraq war politics were such a huge part of my life, like, like at the time that it was happening like oh God. so like yeah. i have like uh you know i'm 31 so like it was like you know right when i started would have been starting to think about politics for myself and so it was just like constantly being inundated with the voice of colin powell and all of these motherfuckers and so yeah sometimes i'm a little i'm just a little bit like damn oh my god man, yeah i was uh really bad i was a huge anti-war um person Go during ahead. the uh the iraq war thing i mean i was i'm 36 i'm a little older yeah um you know, I'd, uh, I was, you know, I remember I was, 9-11 happened. I was, uh, fuck, how old was I, 15 or something? I don't know. But anyway, I was uh, yeah. I was around that age. It's like a teenager. Maybe I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. I was, I was like 16. But anyway, uh, so I was laying in bed, and uh, my mom knocked on my door. And she's like, oh, the tower hit. And I was like, eh. oh, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, God, they hit the other one. We're under attack. Terrorist attack. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I probably should get out of bed then. So I get out of bed and I go and I sit in front of the CNN for, you know, forever. And I wasn't in school because I dropped out at the time because I hate school. Hey, By the way, there's I, someone we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I was school. I was hoping we could get to that because I know that that's like you're one of your your more famous <laughs> supposedly bad takes, yeah. but I agree with it. So whatever. Yes. Oh, we're gonna have a base conversation about this. Oh, great, <laughs> sick. I'm so um, happy. But, I've, I've been beset by people denouncing, performatively denouncing. I saw. Them. I saw all the. De blah, but we'll yeah. we'll talk about it. Mama um, but anyway, Mama I was a. Uh, I left a uh, school and shit, and I was. You know, I watched the thing and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, all right, well, this sucks, I guess. And, you know, well, hopefully we'll be okay. Then I started, like, you know, hearing the, we're going, we got to go Afghanistan. We got to go Afghanistan. I'm like, oh, I guess maybe that makes sense. But then it was like, we got to go Iraq. It's like, Iraq? The fuck do they have to do with it? It's like, well, they helped. It's like, did they? They got dirty like, bombs. Well, they got, you know, they got lots of weapons. It's, you know, it's important we go there. And it just became super obvious pretty quick that it was all bullshit. And yeah. so, you know, I was like hugely against that war. Um, as I think a lot of people, left and liberal alike, were, were against that war at the fucking time. Yeah. And um, man, it was just a fucking hideous time. But I guess uh, I guess I don't really have a point to this. I just oh, wanted to fucking say that I was also against that shit. Yeah, but let's talk about compulsory fucking school. Yeah, let's do shit. that. Let's talk about it. Uh, I, so, I had a, a quote unquote take. So like, I'm sure you saw, you probably saw unfold, uh, probably saw some of the drama unfold. So um, I, uh, I, I saw it like mostly through uh, the lens of Twitter people. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, so I'd be like scrolling through my feed and stuff. And I try to follow like a wide variety of, of people that have their, you know, I don't actually, I'm never fucking aware of what the hell is going on. So I just kind of try to what? follow people who do so that I can kind of vaguely have some sort of like loose idea. Like, I don't know, shoe on head fucked a fish yesterday or something. Oh yeah. But, the, the fish fucker drama. That was, I mean, that's, that's. And I just want to say I fucked fish before it was cool. Anyway. Hell yeah. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the, 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 the fucking, yeah, I saw some people like demon mama's fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, I saw that and I was like, doesn't really seem like that bad of a take to me. It does kind of like school is pretty much bullshit, but all right. So what's yeah. the, uh, uh, what's the, what's the nuance that I'm, I'm missing around so now? 
Oh, God. Okay, so, like, on that particular incident, it started with uh, this, like, small uh, anarchist, like, eco-anarchist poster. Uh, I say small, but I think they actually have a bigger Twitter account than me, technically, but not as big of a YouTube following. So, uh, but they made some post about how, like, uh, school is, uh, mandatory schooling is bad and it hurts kids. And, and someone freaked out about that. And I like sort of chimed in a little bit to be like, Hey, like, I feel like, I feel like you might be go like some of the people responding to this might be going a little hard and being like, this person is like anti, anti intellectual and all this. I'm like, that's not really what they're saying. Like they're criticizing school as an institution, which I think is perfectly legitimate to, to criticize. And so of course it goes back and forth. The Twitter machine happens. And you know, my basic take is uh, like, I have a lot of issues with the concept of compulsory schooling. Um, not because I think, not because I don't think that like learning is good. I think learning is incredible. I actually, I just tend to think that like the way that we we do schooling the way that schooling is done in the framework of like highly industrialized highly imperial states uh, combining that with compulsory education means that what you actually have is you're basically building a compulsory propaganda system and not actually about learning. It's not actually about encouraging people to learn the best way possible. It's not about encouraging them to become the greatest people that they can be and pursue their love their or, or, or their passions, or even be equipped to do those things or to self-realize or to have healthy, you know, mental self care or anything. We don't teach any of that. None of that is all that is sidelined in the name of job skills or a essential uh knowledge that is again determined by largely i mean it's it's a complicated process but by the state via the economy the economy has demands the state has control over what gets taught in schools they say we need these jobs filled this is what we're going to push in schools this is what's going to be considered valuable in schools and anybody who who uh goes out of that is going to be discouraged in schools and discouragement in schools can have a lot of forms, a lot of really negative forms. Um, I mean, everything from detentions to just straight up teacher to just straight up abuse to uh, some of the things I was talking about in this conversation was stuff like uh, permanent records, which is a horrifying thing to do to a kid. Uh, like everything that you do, no matter how frustrated you are, like you're a kid, you might not even have full, like you're fully figured out your emotional control yet. That's going to stick with you forever. And they tell you all the time, it's going to stick with you forever. It's going to ruin your life forever. So of course, there's a lot of kids who in that structure, uh, not only don't learn, but learn, but, but come to hate learning. And, and so I have just a lot of critiques about this idea of, of like mandatory schooling, especially, and I'm a little bit more lenient on like mandatory education. Although I think there's huge problems with that terminology as well. And that way of understanding things. Um, but mandatory schooling is like, I, I can't defend it. I can't sit by and defend it because every time I get into a conversation about this, people go, oh, well, yeah, but like, you know, you got to reform to that. And I'm like, well, why, why do you say that I have to reform to anything when I think the thing that we're doing right now is really bad? Like basically what we have in the United States is like a wide recognition that our schooling sucks, that our schooling is underfunded, that our teachers are way overworked, that kids have a horrible time in school, that kids have horrible nightmares for the rest of their life about school. It's clearly traumatizing to children. They're not even learning that much. It's all about uh, like standardized testing. And, and also uh, it doesn't actually address the issues that people usually bring up in defense of it. So I'm like, so how am I, how am I supposed to, def how am I supposed to, why, why, why should I have to presume that your position, that like the position of like this mandatory schooling is correct just because it's what is currently the law? I don't think that's right. I think that like people have, like, I think we have an abundance of evidence to this. And of course, like, I'm sure I have a couple of conversations about this topic scheduled because people want to debate me about it uh, still all this time later. <laughs> okay, fine. Sure. Um, I mean, like, it's something I care about. So I'm going to talk about it, even if I get a little tired of, you know, going around on the same content, like arguments. But it's like, you know, the responses that people give are not very good. And yet they assume that, like, it has to be because you can't just get rid of it. Right. I'm like, well, well, but, but what it's doing right now is bad. Like in many ways, sure. There are some good things that come from school. There are certainly some benefits, but like the current status quo is terrible. And we can, we have like, not just, 
it's not just crazy, crazy lefty demon mama saying this. This is like, I'm pulling this from critiques by educators. I'm taking this from critiques by people who have been desperately trying to change the way that we do schooling. I'm taking this from uh, literally edu like the, the actual words of the institutions themselves, which have stated, you know, quite plainly over time what their goals were, which is to create basically a factory schooling system that efficiently creates uh, effective workers for a American economy. Which is like, I don't, uh, from my perspective, maybe some people are like super, super like uh, invested in maintaining an economy or whatever. But the way that I look at it is like, I don't really like, I don't think that like, I don't have a, an obligation to like agree that that's a good end goal. <coughs> I don't think that we should shape our entire population around <coughs> the economy. I think that economy <coughs> should be shaped around people, the like the other, the other way around. So like, I, I, there's this fundamental difference. Like, well, we have a fucking like, very like top down economic structure in this country that like, I mean, it, it gets yeah. back to like a lot of the fucking deepest flaws of like a capitalist system where you have power being power and money, basically the same thing in this country being consolidated more and more on the top echelon. And, uh, you know, everyone else is just, you know, I mean, it, it, it seems like to me that like we're on a course right now for everyone's everyone's going to work at Amazon.com in like 20 years. Like yeah. every, every we're just going to be citizens of Amazon Topia or whatever the fuck. And um, yeah, and you know, and I, like, I can tell you that's true because uh, living here in Seattle, the education we, we, system, yeah. you know, it, it's like gearing us up for like, oh, yeah, yeah. Obedience and conformity parts. And that was another thing I was talking about. I'm like, look at the way that like these schools, the, the way that schooling is structured and what it is like, like there, it's, this is not like really secret stuff. Like you can go and look at, at the foundations of modern schooling, which modern schooling is, in America is a capital, is a product of capitalism. It was v shaped by capitalists. The, 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 the educational standards that we use in a lot of places were shaped by people who are explicitly capitalists, who explicitly believed in a world where you need to create a population of workers to continue to perpetuate the capitalist mode of production. And uh, there have been all kinds of alternate uh, uh, suggestions, even for public school projects that aren't based off of that core philosophy, which is the goal is to produce a good citizen who can fit in in this predetermined economic setting that we yeah. have and also and, give free babysitting to all the other workers that's another right? thing yeah it's it's like if your kids are if your kids are over there in the school then you're you're able to you know go work your three jobs yeah. for you know uh mcdonald's and walmart and whoever the hell else yeah why why do why do kids need to be in even we know kids can't focus for eight hours in school we know it's exhausting to them it makes them miserable and they get antsy by the end of the day every single time and yet we shove them in for eight hours why well because nine to fives exist that's what mic problem there's no mic problem stop <laughs> sorry i'm Hope getting so. pissed at this dude in my chat it's like never did fix the mic problem um, <laughs> there's no mic problem it's fine uh, your, your audio sounds it's great. literally fucking fine shut up i'm sorry <laughs> No, I scream at my chat all the time. Don't worry. It happens. Uh, yeah. No problem. Yeah, like, it's 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 wild. And so... Um, so there's the a motherfucker that needs education over there. But, true. Um, <laughs> needs learning. There we go. But you know what? Well, Sometimes, let me ask you this. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, I, I would say, like, um, so as far as compulsory education goes, I would say, like, there probably are a few things that human beings should be instructed in, like, but, like, honestly, like, the basics of life that every person needs as, like, the baseline level for their education is, like, s does not take years to, you know, give to someone, you know? Yeah. Like, at an early age, it's probably a pretty solid idea to teach people how to read. That's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Literacy. Good. Basic math. Sure. But, honestly, calculators exist. So... Unless someone shows like a tremendous proclivity for it, there's no need for them to learn calculus, algebra, etc. You know, addition and subtraction is fine for most people's lives, and if they want to learn it more, they can learn at their own leisure. Like, why isn't why isn't education like a public service? Yeah. It's like when you want it, you can go get it. Like, hey man, I'd really like to go learn how to do basket weaving. I'm gonna go take that class or whatever the fuck. You know, yeah. people make the under we underwater basket weaving joke. But honestly, like, wouldn't you be impressed with someone who could weave baskets underwater? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a course you could go to? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, 
And that's one of the things I've shit. talked about is like I've said that like people have asked like, oh, well, what's your alternative? Well, first of all, I'm like, I don't think there needs to be an alternative to a public schooling system, like an alternative. I don't believe that we need to force people to learn all of these supposedly highly important things. Like, I don't think I don't make that. I don't jump to that conclusion. That's not something that I take as fact. I, I don't even know. I can't know, even remember. I mean, I don't even know what the hell I learned in school. I've definitely right? learned more on my own because I was actually pursuing things that, hey, this is a shocking fucking idea, interested me. So, like, you yeah. know, and, and, and I'm a curious person. There's a lot of things that fascinate me, but, you know, it's not a lot of a lot of the stuff they don't teach in school. And it, even when the subjects are taught in school, they're taught piss poorly. Like, right. I started watching uh, just like a, a year or two ago, like videos on like geography because I was like, hey, wait a minute. Geography is actually a fucking fascinating subject when you actually understand how the topography of land influences like world events and stuff and you know how these it creates resource wars and borders and you know natural sort of like you know the conflicts that arise and the the like i was looking about the the geography of there's a video that just came out from a, a youtube channel i can't remember the name of the channel but it's like why new orleans geography sucks and i live near new orleans so i was fascinated by that and it was like about the rerouting of the Mississippi River and why that was such an important trade route back in the day and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, if this had been if this information had been presented worth a shit in my life as a kid, maybe I'd have uh, cared about it. But yeah. it was just all rote, joyless, miserable teachers teaching miserable students who no one wants to fucking learn the material other than just like so a test can be passed at some point in the future. There's no actual fucking love of learning that's you know facilitated in these institutions unless you have like one of the rare good teachers that truly cares that isn't burnt out that isn't miserable that isn't overworked. totally dejected and overworked by the system you know so i mean it's like yeah. there's no there's no fucking actual love for education in the school system so i mean even if even if i think that there's probably some things that should be compulsory as like literacy and things like that because i think that that's important and i think that you know a kid is not necessarily going to be able to make the decision for the i don't want to learn to read well you know you're probably going to need to know how to read so get in there but well, most the of the shit like, i don't know with that with that i brought up i'm like okay like how people were like oh like it, you know what if the kid's just like i'm i don't i'm not gonna i'm not gonna learn anything i'm like okay so first of all like have you ever actually talked to a child like it's actually quite easy to get children excited for things that they're not immediately open to because they're kids they don't know anything about the world yet and they're like natural curiosity is a part of our evolution it's like literally a documented part of our evolution we have to be able to do that our brains are all like that with very very few exceptions of course there are some like really severe cases where people have really severe learning disabilities and once again our our system does not address people with learning disabilities as we know people with learning disabilities have the worst time in our school systems they put them in the special them. class exactly and then neglect them and, you're gonna and make a macaroni picture it's like yep. all right <laughs> and and it's one of those things where I'm like, uh, yeah, I have a lot of problems with this. Like, like I don't think that you even have to like. I don't think you have to make it compulsory in order to encourage things. I think you can say, wow, yeah, we can all acknowledge it's really fucking good to learn stuff. There's all kinds of skills that maybe you don't even need that are super awesome to learn about. Like, I think that most people do benefit from, like, some learning of understanding of science or the scientific method. Even if they don't necessarily use it in every por portion of their life, I think it's very valuable. But... So what? I would People say the main criticism I would have of the the worldview you have here is not even really of the worldview itself. It's just that it would require a very different country. It's like it goes beyond just like we need to change the education system. It's like you need to change the economic system. You need to change like the work life balance in people's lives and the entire like economic structure of how people are organized and a number of other things just to get to the place where you could even institute the world you're talking about maybe because I right mean, now there's I don't necessarily there's so many people that are just like so left behind like if it, you know it's like oh how oh well you know children love to learn but like there's plenty of parents out there that aren't that have no interest in teaching their kids because sure. They're, you know, first of all, maybe they didn't even want kids, but <laughs> they were pressured into it by like weird social messaging we have mm -hmm. to just breed and breed and breed, um, even if it doesn't make sense, Especially even if it's not what people system. really want, you know, and it's like obviously there's a biological imperative towards that too. So, 
Yeah. Uh, it's pretty easy, pretty easy sell for most people. But like, you could th- think about like all the things you could do just by making people realize that they're under no like obligation to have children. Yeah. Because like, there's so many people out there that really just clearly never wanted them, that have these kids that are just a burden on them. Yeah. That it's just a total fucking miserable mess. They have no interest in actually raising them. They have no interest in actually teaching them. They have no interest in fucking controlling them. Mm-hmm. They have no interest in fucking teaching their kids anything. And, you know, I see them all over the fucking place. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 there's the, the problem is they were there's a, we live in a culture where it's like, have these kids, have these kids, have these kids. And by the time people realize, like, I shouldn't have had these kids, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's too late. You got them. I mean, and the other thing, too, though, is like like there is. Uh, yeah. So you, you touch on a couple of things there. The first one is like this. This is like something that requires challenging a lot of our assumptions about society a lot of the way that we do things and to me that's the point um i i think that the only possible way that we can ever have a better world is if we get people to think about what a better world looks like and then they can start positing alternatives or different solutions or totally new ways of doing things i think one of the things that's very uh like bad and 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 sinister about the current period of time that we live in is that there's basically a whole there's like a handful of people who have more or less decided that they know the only good way to live and it just so happens that the only good way to live is to be an is to you know tie your shoes shine you know uh you know shine your shine your your face uh uh buy amazon product and and go to go follow all the rules no matter how absurd the rules are even if the rules have you strapping a a a uh, an a- Amazon watch onto your hand that literally counts your work actions down to the, to, to to 10 second intervals and and this is the world that a lot of people are saying and I don't think I don't believe in that world so I want people to think about what things could be better what things could what 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 way the ways things should be and the way that we could build them to be better or alternatives to the way that things are and i think that you know my approach to politics is is not like it, it, my job is not to come in here and 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 tell people the policy prescriptions. People like to use that word policy. I kind of hate it when people invoke policy. I don't make policy. I'm a YouTuber. None of you who are watching me, none of you who are watching either of us make policy unless by small chance there's a politician listening right now. And even if you do, you still don't make policy because you've got 500 other people you got to negotiate with and then you still got to get it through Mitch McConnell. So I don't really care so much about this this mysterious idea of policy. I don't really care about imposing my worldview on other people as the right way to do things. What I'm interested in doing is inspiring people to come up with better ways of doing things than the current system and like when it comes to schooling i would love to see a world and i think we have pieces of this world already like for example i think wikipedia is like a a a standalone like little it's a little treasure it's this this thing that a bunch of people can participate in it's structured in such a way that it is sort of independent and very very hard to undermine and what it does is it lets people at their own leisure go and find useful information and there are other things like that that we could build together say like imagine like i mean and people have already done this people have made like wikipedia based curriculums where if you want to learn about a specific topic in great depth you can out of your own interest and curiosity go pick that thing read through it all and you will learn just like you had like or or have a teacher who does that for you there are other ways of teaching there are other ways of learning that aren't this like imposed presupposed way of doing things that we know has a lot of downsides so and i just yeah. don't even, i don't really understand why you couldn't just like to i mean like you could still have money in an education budget you could still have people out there teaching mm-hmm. like you could still do the traditional classroom it just wouldn't be like you're mandated to come here week after week day after day and do this drudge work you know yeah and it's like, like you would think this would appeal to people's sense of like personal freedom right like liberty right and that's supposed to be like one of these great american values doesn't seem like we have much of that doesn't seem like the people who talk the most about it even really give much of a shit about it but like wouldn't it be great if we could like learn about the things we want to learn about do the things we want to do dress how we want to dress live our lives according to our own value systems within reason as long as we're not hurting other people like wouldn't that be cool wouldn't Wouldn't that that be a great world yeah, you know, like, and like I feel like the libertarians are so fucking close, except for their their problem is like taxes and this and that. It's like, well, no, you got to have that. You have to have like a society to fucking guarantee freedom. There has to be like 
you know, uh, uh, yeah. the ability to fucking pool resources and create like social structure. If you want to, you maximize freedom by giving people choice and you maximize choice by creating, you know, a very complicated social structure, more complicated than we have now in a lot of ways, but people can navigate it the way they want to. Then yeah. the world really is a choose your own adventure book instead of just like, here's your life plotted out from birth until death. Yeah, and very little from, variance will be tolerated. You can choose from the Amazon approved option, the Facebook approved option, and the the uh, Google approved option. Those are your three options. You want which one do you want? There you go. Your three flavors. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, I think you can work like, retail until the machines replace you. How about yeah. that? Oh, don't worry. That won't happen. They say as they literally fire you, um, which is something we actually talked about that that very recently. Uh, the automation thing, which I think is going to become an increasingly uh, an increasingly relevant issue. I, you know, oh it, my god, yeah, it's it, already. It, I mean, it already is. I mean, like you look, you already see like nascent uh, nascent uh, anti robotics sentiments cropping up in this country. Good. Um, and I think people look at it as like in fear, like it's going to take our job. It's going to take our job. It's like motherfucker. You play your cards right, it could free you from your job. I agree. But you're not, See, <laughs> you're not playing your cards right right now. You're fucking playing their game. Like, imagine what happens when the ruling class doesn't need you anymore. Right. Uh oh. This is something uh -oh. I talk about. You're this dead is, now. Goodbye. This is, this is game people, over. With, Bad with ending. Me. Uh, when, when I talk about this kind of thing, this is something I talk about a lot with regard to climate change, with regard to automation, that like, we should not fear automation. But right now, I will never discourage, I can't even slightly discourage anti-robotic sentiment because the reality is that the way that robotics is going to be used right now, like as of today, we don't have an answer to it. We don't have an answer <clears throat> to preventing uh, giant swaths of people being left for dead with no government aid. They will not have jobs. They will not have the ability to get jobs even if they well, wanted wait a minute. to. Wait a minute though. Yes. What about our strong social safety net? Ah, yes. The strong forget about self. that. What you forgot about the strong social safety net? Yes. Very, very strong. <laughs> you forgot about Super that one. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We have an amazing social safety net that doesn't even provide uh, <clears throat> health care in most of the United States. It's bad. That's the, the circumstances are bad. And, you know, it's funny. Like, you brought up, like, the whole, like, anti-tax, like, taxation is theft thing. The funny thing is, I actually think there's an argument to be made that taxation is theft. I have, I actually... Oh, it's like I yeah, believe taxation can... is theft, but it's, I mean, I, I would argue it's necessary theft, but sure. I mean, you could argue that. I think, I just think it's funny that like the people, the taxation is theft people, these like, like the sovereign citizens and the like and caps and stuff, they fixate on the completely wrong aspect of it. They're like, oh, I hate that I have to pay my, my gas guzzling tax and all this shit. When in reality, it's like, okay, if you want to actually bring like a, a meaningful <laughs> philosophical critique to taxation, you absolutely can. I mean, I spend a lot of time, like, one of my big passions is, like, anarchist philosophy. So I have a lot of critiques of the state. I have a lot of things that could, you could, if you wanted to go in bad faith, or if you wanted to goof around, you could say it's basically the idea of taxation is theft, plus some other things. But I actually think that there is, there's grounds to be set on this that doesn't just involve, like, wow, I really don't want to pay uh, for uh, this health problem that I'm contributing to. I don't want to pay for the pollution, you know, for taxes on the pollution that I cough out into the world. This is this very, uh, like, siloed off and, and selfish perspective. I think that, like, we have a very weird situation with regard to personal liberty in the United States. I really don't feel like most people actually think about like what that actually means, what what it means to to liberate the individual. You see people who go around and talk about uh about oh personal liberty this, personal liberty that, and then they have the most restrictive gender uh, like ideas of gender that you could possibly imagine. Like bitch, you don't support uh, personal freedom if you don't support people's ability to identify as they as how they please like what are you talking well, about how it's you yeah i mean like it's uh, this is something i've i've uh, drives me fucking nuts it's like so like the trans issue or whatever or guns issue or any of these these issues that come up as like freedom issues it's like mm -hmm. when people tell me they want freedom it's like i believe in freedom i believe in liberty i'm like okay Let's see if you let's I'm going to figure out if you really do or not. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, what what you find out after like pretty quickly into interrogating them is like, oh, you are in the only freedoms you give a shit about are the, are the about the things you personally want to do. Yeah. The things other people do actually scare the shit out of you. Like the, the fastest way to find out about about someone's hypocritical positions on on uh, personal freedom is ask whether they think that you should be able to get uh, get Viagra 
on on a pers on like a, the informed consent model, which they will always say yes. And then you ask, well, should trans people be able to get the less dangerous HRT procedures or H HRT prescriptions on an informed consent basis? And they go, wow, wow, hold on a second here. It's like, big, which one is it? Which one is it? I'm scared now. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. That's the scary ones. What you mean? You mean people that I the people that I love might turn out to be queers? Oh my god, so bad. It's so bad. You know, I was a, I get, I don't, I don't know. So when it, when it was, when it was, when the gay people were the big issue, mm. um, you know, when gay marriage was like the the issue land, I guess Texas is bringing it back to the fore at this point. I heard but, about that. We're gonna be covering that later this week. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking Texas. The second we come up with a nuclear bomb that can explode in the exact shape and size of Texas, better off this country waffle will be. Time. Just let you waffle know. Waffle time. Yeah. Texas shaped waffle time. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, hey, when we can get the good people out. <laughs> The rest of us got to go anyway. No, um, but um, te fuck Texas. But anyway, when, when, when it was a gay issue, it's like it was so obvious to me that all these motherfuckers that were kind of oh, gays, 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 gays. It's like you're gay. Just yeah. like you're gay or you're afraid you're gay. Like there's enough gay in you that you're scared of it. And that's why you're acting Fixing this way. On it. Yeah. So it's like with the gender issue, the trans issue was like, what are you scared of there? Is it your family member or is it you? Is it like. You're so scared that there's like a masculine or feminine side that exists within your fucking supposedly cis self that you're going to fuck with other people just so that you can't even like, because like they're like terrified of the road being open to them and to the people they know. It's like, oh, yeah. and what if they take that road? Yeah, what if they so do, what? motherfucker? What Would business you is it of yours? <laughs> We've we've all we all know we all know there are more the people there are him. more people who are who are uh, you know gender non-conforming or who would love to have little bits of their gender that they don't feel they have to that they don't feel forced into you know what I mean like wait, oh wait wait a minute you're blowing my mind you yeah. mean to tell me that like the arbitrary social expectations placed upon us based on our genitalia is not for everyone. Holy yes. shit! I, I know, shocked. isn't it? It's like oh. the, the craziest thing you could imagine. I know. I can't. And yet, oh, it's unfathomable. And yet the free speech warriors and the and the and the personal liberty motherfuckers are nowhere to be found when when uh they're passing laws that say that if you really want to use the bathroom, a business owner basically reserves the right to ask you for your birth certificate, which is insane. So just absurd. I'm a trans humanist Hell and. Yeah. Uh, I'm not anti-robotics, by the way. I'm super <laughs> pro-robotics. I'm not. I'm even not even if the for the record, even if the even if the Terminator future happens, I say good on you, Skynet. Hope you did better than we did. But um, it, you know, as far as as far as human beings go, like I feel like in our current form, we're too stupid to possibly survive, and we're gonna we're in dire need of some upgrades. Cool. And I don't know. I feel like you know, uh, limb replacement kind of stuff. That's a stage towards transhumanism. People have started putting chips in their fucking arms and stuff. The tongue, the split tongue. Yeah. That's yeah. a fucking step. Transgender people in general step yes. in the direction towards transhumanism. I agree. Even fucking has the same goddamn root word for fuck's sake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, of course I'm fucking going to stand with the trans people because I want to be a fucking robotic, huge cocked minotaur creature in fucking 3,000 years. Like, what? what's your problem? I want to fucking shoot rainbows out of my ass as I fly through space. Yes. Exactly. Go to hell. Yeah. Damn I mean, you. And, and I mean, that is, and that's like, that's the thing. Like, that's why I take such a liberatory angle towards it. You know what I mean? Because I do want to see people be able to express themselves more. I want to see people be able to uh, live, like, be who they want to be. Like, and, and, and that goes in many, many ways. I agree, by the way, just for the record, I, I shouldn't say that I'm like, I, I, I'm not anti-robotics. I'm anti the state of robotics. I understand. I under yeah, I understand. I mean, like, you're anti the power would. structure that the robotics would manifest under and who would be in control of, course, of the fucking because technology it, because if, if that's we a perfectly to, legitimate concern. Yeah, if we were to implement the, if we were to implement like mass robotics right now, which we have in some areas, we know exactly how it would go. Only rich people would have access to it. Everyone else would be locked out and there would be a new new class of human made which is the unenhanced human it's it's de it's like deus ex stuff it's 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 just dystopia stuff and we haven't figured that out yet we haven't like as a society we haven't put two and two together that like right now 
uh, the the robotics is held entire robotics as an entire industry is held entirely by the wealthiest members of society. It's and the uh, actually kind of like a tragic irony in a way that yeah. the technology most capable of liberating us from the shackles of labor and probably the thing that's like the most feasible path towards like functional anarchy um, is also the technology that right now is probably on the path to cement us deep, deep in the other direction. <laughs> and it's yeah. going to be fucking really, you know, and to me, like the, the most important issue going on right now, other than like climate change, obviously, because that's like a huge existential threat to our yeah. existence. But the second existential fucking hurdle we have to get over is like, as technology increases, as robotics increases, as AI advances, as machine learning grows ever more complex and rapid, um, who's going to control that technology? And right now, it's not looking good for the Vox Populi, my friends. It is not. It's not looking good for you and me. It's looking like we're going to get fucked. It's looking like we're going to get the RoboCop future. Hell, we're pretty much in the RoboCop present, if you want to be honest. Yeah, we really are. Uh, like, we, we, this is something that we... Uh, I covered very recently, we did a, a stream talking about surveillance and how modern social media surveillance is, is it's, we don't realize it as surveillance all the time, but it really is. Um, there is, you know, we're, we're in a, a current state of affairs where as it currently stands, you, even leaving social media doesn't actually leave you from social media because so many people are plugged in. They can see your absence. They go, ah, this person is referencing somebody who we don't have in our database. And they do that. This has been documented doing this. This has already been determined that they, they do this. They keep track of who's not on their platforms. And Facebook even made shadow profiles in case someone who wasn't on their service decided to come on based on the information that they had from that person's associations. So like, yeah, we're in a very strange and dystopic future. And I think that until people realize that like, um, you know, that like, these tech like technology is is the the invent the inventiveness of humanity is is morally neutral these inventions are tools but they are currently wielded only by one type of person that person being somebody who is very invested in the current order of the world in the current way things are and if things aren't ac acceptable as they are now the people who if if, if if they will remain this way or get worse if the only people that we ever uh say can have can control these things are the billionaires are the bezoses and the whatever and they can choose to say yes the way that we're going to use it is to make workers needless and then we'll build big walls around our city and when the climate change comes we'll be safe in our nice uh you know uh arcology and you will die in the <clears throat> woods or you will die in a flooded city and we won't care and we saw this already happen with covid this is something that gets so mad I, I just think <laughs> yeah yeah i don't mean to interrupt but i mean i just i find it funny that um all of a billion, all of our billionaires, trying to trying to escape the Earth for some reason. You know what I'm saying? This is like, hmm. The big, big. Seems like you guys are working on a little exit and, plan. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've been pretty open about it at certain points as well. You know, and like you have to ask yourself, like, okay, so uh, if we buy the vision that's being sold to us by people like Elon Musk, these like these tech billionaires who say, oh yeah, we're gonna go have a Mars colony, what does that world actually look like? For Elon Musk, it looks like having a golden throne on Mars. Well, okay, realistically, it looks like dying in the shuttle on the way over to Mars. But let's be real. But but other than but, that, but let's like say Musk is not. I mean, Musk himself would not ever fucking make the trip until everything else was already like all the bugs had worked out. He'd send all his little test people up there. Someone else had already died for him. You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, of course. Like we've seen that already be the case. Like they they always distribute the pain of of their failures, whether it's via like you know. I mean, God, you, we could talk about this so much with so many different companies that rush things out that, be, that you know, we live in a sales world, a world of sales where like Elon Musk can promise things that have literally never even been built, things that are mathematically failures, Hyperloop, all of this. There's like a whole channel that just goes around and talks about the engineering behind these terrible ideas and how they really, really do not work on a fundamental level. Um, like these ideas will get sold as like these futuristic solutions. They don't even have an option. Everybody else has to absorb the cost. And then this guy keeps get, getting to be rich, hoping that he'll find a way, you know, chance his way or, or, or buy his way into a solution that will save him from the climate change that's going to come for the rest of us. But what that means for anybody who's like, the way I describe it is like right now there's like a bar and that the bar is who is going to get to live 
um, a, a reasonably comfortable life. And that bar is rocketing upwards. It is just going straight up and the, your income's got to be higher and higher and higher or you're living a bad life. And for those who don't know, um, the bad life in America is pretty fucking bad. Like people think that like, oh, you know, yeah, some of us are doing fine, but like I, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've lived that life before, long before I was a streamer. I lived through the fucking wildfire season in California. It was miserable. Like we lost power for huge amounts of times. Our, our hospital lost power. Our grocery stores in our town just had nothing for us. There was no one there. No one helped us. It was just people in the area being able to help each other. And this is a story that's become increasingly common. That is going to become even more common. And like, I talk about stuff like, uh, one of the things that frustrates me sometimes is I, I, I sometimes sense in a lot of people who are interested in, in climate change and who are interested in societal change, this idea that like, basically, um, you know, it's more or less going to be exactly the same. And then there's just like the earth is going to get bad or something. But what it actually looks like is housing becoming more expensive, computers becoming more expensive, cars becoming way more expensive. So all of a sudden people who were here before and they could have a car and a computer or whatever, well, they're now below the line. They don't get to have a car and a computer anymore. And not having a car and a computer means they might not be able to get jobs as easily anymore, which means all of a sudden you don't have a house. And all of a sudden more and more people are falling down into this like forgotten class of people, which grows by the day, especially in COVID. And, uh, I look at that and I go, this is what is happening. This is this is what's going on. Like, if we want to have nice things in the future, we have to figure out how to get them for ourselves. <clears throat> we have to figure out how to help each other get them or else we're not going to have them. Because I know, like, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll become like a famous streamer or something like that. And maybe I'll make a whole lot of money. Realistically, that's a pipe dream. But me and many other, even people who make a lot of money for streaming, we're soon going to be on in the position of where we won't be able to afford things like a, a computer or or a thing that we need for our job. I mean, cars right now, look at car prices. They're fucking skyrocketing. You can't get used cars anymore. You can't get anything. It's it's the chip shortage is 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 fucking everybody. Like these are things that are are we're going to have to learn how to build new things that we didn't think about because we don't have the backup. What happens uh in, in the modern era if uh if like like I ask people this sometimes just like I give them something that happened to me. What do you do if tomorrow you find out you get a call from your your power company, you're losing power for seven days and there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. Most well, people, recently I went through uh, Hurricane Ida here. So there was a pretty significant amount of time without power. I mean, obviously there was some warning, but like not much. You know, yeah. it's like, well, the hurricane's coming. And, you know, it took them for pretty much like, I don't know, 10 days or something like that to restore my power. And I was like displaced. I had to go stay with my uncle for a few days and stuff yeah. up in uh, Missouri. So, I mean, there was like, but I mean, like I had some, you know, I had some savings that so I wasn't like, oh shit, I'm going to be destitute or whatever. And, you know, I have like sort of a flexible schedule where I can like do my own hours and do my own shows as a streamer and shit and podcaster. But like, you know, if I was uh, for a lot of people, you know, it was like they had no choice but to stay because they can't afford to evacuate. And then when they're here, it's like, you know, they're they're just they have to go through the process of their powers out for days. And it's, you know, it's the summer in Louisiana. It's like or, or late. I mean, it's still summer here, honestly, even in October. <laughs> but I mean, like the the heat, the humidity, I mean, like people, it's 95 degrees and humid as hell outside of people's houses. They got no power. They got no AC. And, uh, you know, even if they got a generator, they got to go to the gas station and get gasoline for it. And those supply lines are stretched thin because of the crisis. And it just showed me like, um, and it, it's, I guess it has showed me the previous times, like when I went through Hurricane Katrina and stuff like that as well, that like, you know, it's very easy to take society from somewhat baseline functional to completely dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much. It's just like a little like, uh, yeah, it's and, a little and we're there. And, and, and a lot of that is because we, like, as a society, have neglected uh, things like community. We've neglected not just, not literally just your local community, like, knowing your neighbors. Although I think that's fantastic. That's very, very good. But, like, we don't, 
we don't have like like so many people don't have connections like anymore like they don't have an uncle that 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 they can go stay with like you said even though that could that's like a that's like a thing that probably everybody might be able to set up like uh i i could probably house some people if i if i knew people who were nearby and i do know people now i do of course in this position but in the time that i was like in california we didn't know anybody we were just stranded in the middle of the mountains with the people that we lived with and one of our neighbors had a, a generator that's big enough to power their house, and we had a generator that was big enough to run the fridge on and off. So that's what we did. We lived with no heat, no nothing. We dealt with it. That's how. That's the only thing. And now I look at this and I go, damn, that was a horrible way to live. It was terrible and it was miserable. And and that experience was was horrible. And of course, I've been through power outages. I'm not <coughs> saying like a power outage itself, but I'm talking a city being out of power. Our whole city, all the stores, everything. Nothing was open. You yeah, I don't go. know. If, unless someone's been in that predicament where they've they've been in an area that's been without power for a long period of time, and unfortunately, that's not that uncommon of an experience for Americans at this point. But I mean, you know, if uh, I know there's those huge power outages in Texas during the, yeah. one of the coldest times of the year. A lot of people um, die. You know the huge power outage problems here and um i know you guys have been having some power issues uh in uh, the pacific northwest recently as well yeah. uh pg and e in california is a terrible power Monsters. company and they're you know they've caused so many fires uh, as well as just contributing to like drought conditions and uh of course just being a shitty unreliable power grid in the first place because they don't modernize or update anything ever ever um yeah it's bad it's you know really they're, bad. Like, they're convicted of like i mean like killings. to go without electricity for a long time is is pretty much it's just the it's the breakdown of fucking civilization at that point like there's there's vestiges of it there's an idea of it coming back but you know you're not living at the same social level because you got no way to charge any sort of like device or whatever or you have to be very creative about how you figure out how to do it you got to rely on gas generators you got to go to where there is power if you want to charge devices and things of that nature you got no internet connection um you got no if you're if you have an electric um stove you got no cooking surface or you're gonna have to go if you got a gas stove you might be lucky enough to be able to use that um, there's just so many, so many things you're not able to use, and it goes beyond just your personal convenience. You've got to, uh, uh, you know, extrapolate that to the whole community. Yep. And you know, there's no the 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 grocery store might not have uh, the ability to fucking keep food cold, or if they do, it's like a huge gas generator going, which is sucking up gas resources from the area. It's really hard to get gas. Gasoline becomes a fucking crazy commodity. Sometimes there's price gouging uh, because of that. Um, and then, you know, there's gigantic lines at the at the the gas station for the fuel pump because, you know, everyone's trying to power their generators, those lucky enough to have them. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It's like you have no electricity. Society, as you know, it pretty much crumbles uh, really quickly. Yeah. And that's why something I say is like, you know, uh, something I say frequently on my channel is like, life is never going back to exactly the same way that it was before, not even close to before COVID. And with climate change coming, we have to really start thinking about new ways of taking care of each other and new ways of just living our lives. If you want to have, if you cherish like your internet connections, you got to figure out a way that's not just, I hope the government is going to keep maintaining everything in this area because we've, sh we've shown, everybody should know now between Katrina, between um, between COVID, COVID is the biggest tell, of course, of all. But between the fire, the, the the fires all across California, the government doesn't care. The corporations are the ones who've made the laws in a lot of these places. PG&E is a great example of a company that just maneuvered itself into a position where it basically controls most of a state's power, and the state can't do anything about it because they gave them that power. They gave them the legal right to do that thing, and there's just nothing you can do. So then. What do we do? What do all the people do? Do we just lay down and die? I say no. I say we need to figure out ways to get around this stuff. Maybe we start uh, setting da sitting down and saying, okay, so let's let's look at our neighborhood. Let's get to know everybody in our neighborhood. Let's start reconnecting with people. Let's move in near each other, near people who we know. If we can do that, when we get an opportunity, let's live near people that we care about. Let's uh, let's find out a way that if the power goes out, maybe we can all share a generator. Maybe we have a, an alternative refrigeration solution. Maybe we have a community uh, food bank or a community armory even if we have to go hunt if it's that bad. Something like that. I usually don't think that you need to go to like extreme survivalist measures to be able to go, oh my God, like we need to be able to take care of each other. Like we need to be able to take actually take care of each other. And, Sounds like uh, survival notes for the apocalypse basically. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, get, I get why people go like, oh, Oh, this is like super doomer and shit. I'm like, but I'm like, 
are you watching are we watching the world like 700 right and my wife America? is the same way it's like every, when she talks about the future it's always in terms of like you know we'll you know we could uh i need to learn more about growing stuff so that we can have uh sustainable crops and all this and i'm like wow you really think it's gonna be like to that level she's like yeah we're already having shortages now it's like all right yeah fair enough yeah, I mean, I, mean right, I, so. I think I think I think there's some truth to it. Like, I don't believe like I I think that a lot of times the survivalist types, like especially on the internet, they they go they fixate on the bunkers and the and the mountain house foods and like these silly buckets and whatever. But what really matters is like, yeah, um, being able to to make some food. No, like most, it's not realistic for most Americans to be be able to make enough food to sustain their family off of it. However, what happens if? Everybody in a community starts growing some food of their own. All of a sudden, in an emergency, you can pass stuff back and forth. You can say, oh, wow, our one neighbor has tomatoes. One neighbor's got fucking weed. One neighbor's got cider that they made in the basement. One neighbor's got a whole bunch of water stocked up. Let's come together. Let's exchange this stuff. Let's work together. Let's make our life not as miserable as it would have been. Whereas in an alternative scenario where nobody's doing any of these things, um, you just go, oh, shit, the local store, the local Walmart uh, fired all their employees because we're having a, a, a month long power outage, uh, in, in, you know, put on, imposed on us by PG and E and now we can't get anything. They shipped all of the supplies elsewhere so they could sell them for minimal profit and they don't give a shit about us. And the government has what for us, uh, like a, a truckload of, of rice. Here's the problem yeah. though. Here's the yeah. problem. You know, you're tilling your garden and stuff like, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to plant some seeds, grow this, grow that up. Oh, beep, beep, beep. Drone 71G, report to Sector 19 immediately. Bezos needs you. Hail yeah. Bezos. Hail Bezos. You know, Hail like, Bezos. Yeah, and like Bezos is going to show up and be like, grew some carrots, huh? Notice you got them seeds off of Amazon. You know, us and Monsanto got the trademark on them seeds. Uh, we're going to have to confiscate those carrots, buddy. You know what's funny you, that you bring Feel free to buy it back from us if you want, you know. Yeah, we'll sell them back to you at a real low cost. Don't you worry. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we keep, we here at Amazon.com care about the starvation of many Americans, and that's why we're giving ten percent off. Oh, what's um, that? carrots this week only. You know, if, <laughs> All if, right, you awesome register, if you register your family for the Amazon ankle bracelet now, you'll get twenty five percent off on your future grain rations. Yeah, like that kind of shit. I mean, but there there is a certain truth to that. New but, Amazon food insurance. You know, yeah. it's like, oh god. You ever hungry? You just gotta pay your you you pay your premium, and then they give you the food token. It just so happens that the premium there's a monthly cost for the food thing, and the premium is exactly the same cost as it would have cost to buy the food before. But it's very convenient. Mm. It's convenient. Amazon, this bread is covered in maggots. Like that's protein. Bonus. Yeah. Oh, we're charging you an additional 25 for an added protein bonus. It's like the fucking guac at, at, uh, at, at no. uh, Chipotle. <laughs> you want some? Would you like some? Would you like additional protein? Here's a scoop of maggots. There you go. Yeah. Fantastic. No, you know, it's funny too, because, um, there was an article we read recently, you know, uh, that's actually where a lot of, a lot of, uh, like people like Bezos and a lot of these bank, like uh, financier types, when they go to, um, when they go to conventions, that's a lot of the things they talk about is the enforcement aspect because they go, Oh yeah, it's great that we have all of these, um, you know, we have all these laws that make it so you can't plan anything. Well, well what happens if like things go really bad and like, how do we make our guards do the things that we want them to do? Like, can, can you tell me how to do that? And like, that's like literally what they're asking. They're saying like, how do we have a standing army so that we can crack down on people? Because that is a problem. Like Bezos himself is a fucking, he's a, you know, he's got, he's got a wrist the size of a, of a fucking pencil. This guy can't do shit. So he needs, a, he needs an army and he needs, he needs drones with dot, with the guns, you know, marked on their back and, and all this shit. And he needs people to do that. So they're looking into that. They're looking into that, but what that does mean is that they are these these people who are in that position, the people who are trying to push towards a, a super monopoly over Whole Foods and everything else. They know that th they know there's a weak spot. They know that if people just say we don't respect what you say we're supposed to respect, that um that they would be in a rough spot, that they might not even be able to succeed. And so I I always say you know maybe we should take attention to that, and maybe we shouldn't be so willing to do. <laughs> everything that they tell us to do because we know it's not in our best interest we know it never is they always say it is we, we've seen it we've seen the work conditions in amazon we've seen where they go with it they believe that humans should be squeezed until they collapse 
because it's for the greater good of Amazon. Well, why do you think they have, they have a, what they call a high churn rate, mm -hmm. which I think the phrasing, I think the phrase they use just tells you all you fucking need to know. Just churn, yes. churn, churn. And right now, Amazon's big concern is like, fuck, we burned through so many of these fuckers. I don't even, we might run out of fucking saps to work for us. What are we yeah. going to do? I mean, it's, that's have literally to... happening all over the country. Like, we, we, there's there's a two side, there are two sides of the whole, like, you know, help wanted signs up all over the place. First of all, they've increasingly over the years, corporations have realized that if you put help wanted signs up in all of your stores all over the country, it gives off the idea that there's more jobs available than there actually are. And therefore, on a passive level, people will pitch lower for their pay. But also, there's a legitimate job shortage going on right now. And uh, that puts... That puts our country in a very weird place because, like, it doesn't seem like the corporations are willing to pay more. It seems I drove like past. Uh, I drove past a Wendy's the other day, and it said, "Uh, you know, now hiring up to ten dollars an hour." I'm like, "Up to ten dollars an hour? Wow. Fuck off!" Incredible. <laughs> it means nothing. Yeah, cost yeah, of right. living has gone up by like that would have been cool. exciting like twenty, thirty years ago, maybe. Yeah. It's like Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I look at like now paying prices. worthless an hour. It's like okay, cool. Here you can you. We're gonna pay you. Guess what? We're gonna we're gonna bump you over the 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 uh you know federal minimum wage. The federal minimum wage, which pays for less than a quarter of your rent every month. Well, now how long until it's just three hots and a, and a cot? That's what I want to know. Three yeah. hots and a cot. Work at Wendy's. You work at Wendy's, you can have three free Wendy's meals a day and a place to sleep your weary head at the end of your work cycle. I mean, if it's not if it's not going to be Amazon, if it's not Wendy's and, and Amazon who does that, somebody's going to do that because we do have a lot of people who don't have that. The how the homelessness crisis is on a rise. I feel like I feel like I I I I never want to get people too doom and gloom because I do I do think that there are ways to to alleviate this and to solve this, but I think it requires us to be, um, you know, very open and also very realistic about what we're looking at and the and the and the reality is like I mean there's gotta, there's real solutions I'm just not allowed to like say them but you know <laughs> hey <laughs> that's funny we were talking about that before we were talking about uh, how. Uh, what things you're allowed to talk about can sometimes be a, a very interesting uh, uh, gaze into what people don't. You know, want I've to honestly, talk about. I've honestly thought about it, and I've been like, man, there's a lot of shit I want to say that, uh, you know, that I just like. I honestly, I got to the point where I literally thought about writing it all down, and then saying it, but then making it look like someone caught it on a hidden camera and then released it against my will. Like, <laughs> oh no. That's a genius idea. <laughs> it's just like, oh, fuck, you know, yeah, they spied on me and really caught me saying some crazy. I mean, yeah, I, I would oh, never shit. advocate doing that to Mr. Bezos. I was yeah. just, I was upset and, uh, you know, burned down the wall. Burn no, I never fucking, what? It was a yeah, poem. Crazy. It's a poem. It's crazy. A poem. It was all a joke. Yeah. All a crazy joke. A parody, non-actionable. This was me doing a character called uh, ah. the, the evil atheist. There you go. Yeah, he's yeah. a crazy guy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true. but And it's funny to me, too, because, like, you know, like you mentioned Here's earlier. Here's the funny thing. The what are you allowed to direct your hatred at, though? Where yeah. are you allowed to direct the hatred? Because everyone's got hatred burning in them right now. Because sure. sure. of the way everyone's getting fucked in this country. Where is it, Where are you allowed to direct it? You mean me, personally? Where do I yeah, Everybody. It? Where are we allowed? Where's the, okay. What's the fair... Oh, I... Oh, man, I hate... Haitians. Yeah. Ah, I hate Mexicans. I hate them. They're ruining everything. Trannies. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's <laughs> us. Yeah, it's us. it was them. Yeah, it's fucking us. Yeah, but where are you allowed? It's fucking You're us, not allowed guys. to. Oh, but is it Bezos? Oh, Bezos. What? He's he's. Oh, oh. How can you be so? Musk. Mean? Oh, brilliant. Thomas Edison of our time. Yeah, he literally is to, to all his inventions. But hey. Like you're not allowed to direct your hatred in certain places. You're not allowed to fucking pr talk about certain solutions. You're not allowed to be like, I'm gonna fucking. Well, yeah, I can't even say to, it as a joke. Try to but have whatever. a conversation. What I'm gonna say is try to have a conversation about what would truly be just with regard to mm, uh, recent pipeline constructions and how literally uh, there, you know, many of these pipelines that are currently issues of controversy were literally built via complete violation of 
of, of, of like centuries old treaties, just more stealing, more death, literal open acknowledgement of that the ground has been poisoned that kill that is killing indigenous people. And you tell me what what do you think is the real what do you, what do you think is a real solution there when like the police, the official police are literally cracking down at people who are currently and provably being poisoned? What do you think a just solution is there? I don't have the answer. I don't have it for you. But I just want to know, like, how do you have that conversation? How do you have a conversation about what is just when the default state of the world, when what is so-called acceptable, is so violent by its default? That's that's an interesting thing for people. Right, and it's like, I don't know, you're like, it's like, don't punch down, don't punch down. It's like, we're literally not allowed to punch up. <laughs> like, it's like literally against the rules. You've rigged the game to where punch up isn't even an option. So, of course, everyone's punching down. It's like, man, I got to blame someone for this. It's like, hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's your maybe it's the rulers. I don't know. Maybe it's the people who fucking lord over you. Did you remember when there was like a wave of 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 discourse on Twitter? Maybe not. I don't know how how much you see the tw discourse. Do you remember obsessive the, the obsessively always on Twitter scanning through everything? All right yeah. then. So you probably saw it. Do you remember the anti eat the rich uh, discourse? Do you remember when people were saying that that was a uh, a a a TOS violation threat of of violence because people said eat the, eat the rich. Yeah, like, um, like, yeah, I remember this. I'm like, so basically, th the state is that like rich people can literally just say, yeah, we're 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 planning on making it so that you you basically die. We're planning on uh, sucking up all of the all of the money from pandemic relief, using it for ourselves, and you're going to die. We're going to talk about you like your human capital stock. Uh, you know the words that they actually literally used multiple times. Uh, these corporate representatives, these these Trump administration representatives talking about humans we're going to have 700,000 people die we're going to laugh about it we're going to become two trillion dollars richer but you're committing a violence by saying eat the rich by saying a slogan like eat the rich that is the type of that is like the like it's funny because you know back in the 90s it was politically correct that you know that people were all mad about now it's like i don't know woke or something i don't know they have a new term for it critical race theory whatever stupid bullshit they come up with every single day it's the same fucking idea cancellation or whatever it's like you know it's really funny that like there's so much paranoia over like oh oh <coughs> you know it, we're getting canceled they're canceling all of us you can't make a joke anymore and then all of a sudden you make a joke like you say a thing like eat the rich or you say yeah you know maybe it's kind of fucking shitty that like somebody can sit here with their their foot on the neck of the poorest people in america and just watch them die and like you know laugh about it or in the case of pg e literally have all uh, take all of their um uh all of their executives out to a wine cave dinner on the night that they shut off power to somewhere around like 30 percent of middle california that can literally happen and they can do that and that's not vulgar or violent or horrible even though literally people died within the first 30 minutes of that shutdown while while the ex executives were literally sipping their wine and enjoying their you know 40 dollar steaks or whatever um but yeah don't you dare say something that's so why offensive. i just feel like social conservatism so is a rich people psyop dude it is it totally is one it's fucking totally it's like it's a it's a rich people psyop on fucking the population yep. like all the there's a reason why why so much conservative media is so funded and why all of their ideals and ideas are just constantly shoved down everybody's throat why they fucking are i mean and it's like because the whole message of it is Blame blame the fucking lowest among you. Yeah. It, it wasn't the it wasn't the rich people. It, it was, was the immigrant. Immigrants. It was the oppressed minority. It's every fringe in society. That's the true enemy. Yeah. And and you know, it's some of them even will will not like. I talk to uh, every every fucking like month or so. I'll get mm -hmm. somebody in my inbox like, you used to be cool. Now you're whatever. And so they'll they'll and it's always a conservative, right? Yeah. yeah and it's like. They're, they're like, oh, man, these fucking uh, elites rule. I was talking to one, I don't know, like two months ago or something. He's like, yeah, the elites, they rule it all. They rule it all. They rule it all. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they do. They do. They do. That's why we got to tax them more, right? Tax yeah. the rich. Okay? <laughs> He's like, no, man. Because first of all, let me tell you what one thing. First of all, I'm not against inherently the idea of accruing massive amounts yeah, of wealth. Yeah, exactly. I just think these particular rich people are jerks. Yeah, I, it's supposed to be it's me. Like, okay. I'm supposed to be the rich one. I would make way so, better decisions if I was the no rich No actual one. systemic opposition to what's yeah. going on here. But then also, if, you, if we was to tax them, that's just all part of their plan, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh, you think they... 
You think they want to? You think they don't want to be taxed? They do want to be taxed. Yeah, that's how they. And get then the while we're living off their taxes, people. they run off with their even more money because they think, because you know, because once they got us taken care of and stuff, then they can be free to do whatever. It's like, hey. um, what are we? Wait, even if that was the plan, we're still end up better taken care of in the scenario. So like, what? Hey. It's funny because like that's the same isn't that like isn't it isn't that just the same exact mentality that like went into deregulation like we're like okay look I'm not a statist I can be honest about that I got a lot of critiques of the state but let's be real regulation of giant corporate bodies is better than no regulation of giant corporate bodies like giving them a, a, a check to their power is fantastic so I sit here and I go what you have these small business tyrant people, these boat boat shop owners from small towns, and they're like, yeah, we got to shoot down this. There's all this regulation. They're coming in to choke small people out of business. And then you look at the law, and it's like a, regu it's like a pollution regulation on a, on a coal mining company or a coal refining company you're like wait what do you mean why are you opposing this they're like well you know it's about it's about it's about the principle you don't want the government getting involved with with the business and it's like they're stopping like carcinogens from being cut like pumped into a river why do you care about this don't you realize that like your small business is down river from where the carcinogens are going to get pumped they're like well it's about the principle it's about small but it's government because it's, a, because it's like, like this it's the same thing as always it's like once again the psyop kicks in yeah. Because the rich guy is yeah. like, oh shit, I hate this legislation. I gotta go convince these bumpkins that it's gonna fucking, uh, you know, encro encroach on their freedoms or something. You know, oh, yeah, they're trying to hire, fucking make like us a... communists, y'all. It's yeah, like, they... oh, they won't let me pollute the river we all drink out of communism. Everybody, what do you what do you say? And then everyone, for some reason, is like, yeah, 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 totally. Well, I mean, it's also like they can literally like. Like, if it's a big enough corporation, they will just literally hire people to do PR. They'll just buy ad space. And this is, like, that whole thing of where it's, like, you know, there was this great moment when, like, Bernie was running. And everybody was, like, wow. Like, maybe we're going to do something about, like, money in politics. Maybe we're going to see something against that. And then it's, like, wait a minute. Like, the situation with money in politics in America is so bad, like, not even Bernie could touch it. Not even the biggest, like, the most exciting candidate that was getting all of the support early on. And, like, none of these people can do that because it is so deeply embedded. And it's been it's been embedded, this, 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 this particular, like mentality towards like how that, that like money is speech that if you're wealthy you should be able to do anything you want to do with that money even if it means like overriding other people's rights this 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 piece of ideology has been ingrained so deep into our system that like it's almost impossible to even imagine american politics the idea of taking money out of politics completely uh, disassembles what we understand modern politics to I mean be. you're almost yeah you're pretty much talking about the end of like what I mean, politics has pretty much just devolved into a giant wealth redistribution scheme yeah. going in the opposite direction than the one that people have you know, been concerned about all this time. Because it's basically just like they suck up all the money and then they give it to business contract. They give it to, you know, different contractors and companies out there making Fortune yeah. 500 fucking shit. And they give tax breaks to every, you know, all the rich people and stuff. Do we remember then, like how, how then those people fucking turn around and they give it, they give it to the next generation, the next crop of Congress people and senators and whoever else they need to bribe. Yeah. And then they fucking make sure the laws continue to support it. And it's just like this site, uh, you know, the cycle where the money just keeps rising the top creeps rising the top and it's like right there in the figures it's right there i mean we see that the wealth just becomes more and more concentrated at the top eventually we won't have any and they'll just be like yeah. all right well we got no wealth we're, we're just back to feudalism you just don't own anything you just live on a well you're not even land. back to because at least under feudalism it's worse than feudalism because feudalism is like <laughs> you're necessary at least like you still got to till the fields now they got like you know a robot to till the field or whatever yeah. the fuck they need so your ass is just like you're not even a surf anymore. You're just fucking useless. Yeah, you're, you're just you're, being you're left a, out yeah. of the fuck. You hey, you go die in the wilderness. You're like a wildling. Yeah, you know they've got weird? their you know little space palace or whatever, and you know you're just down here on the fucking the corpse of Earth trying to scrounge up a fucking rat for dinner. I don't know. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I unironically, like, I think that's Best case like, scenario. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if we do nothing, that is the best case scenario. The, 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 the worst case scenario, of course, is, uh, is, you know, a mass withdrawal of, of, of the richest people into, into highly, highly secure enclaves, you know, like they've already started sort of doing with places like, you know, the villages where a bunch of rich old people go and live and it has private That's a good point. And, yeah. You know what? I got a fucking middle ground. They don't like eat the rich, right? Yeah, they don't like it. They don't like it. So like that's it. too far. All that's right. Well, I have a centrist proposal. Ooh, ooh I love centrist. Let's hear. Yeah, this we don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to eat the rich, but we can we at least cook the rich. Yeah. See, there we go. You know, just like you hey, don't gotta eat them, just cook them. Yeah, right. You know, perfect. we're not gonna go all the way to eating. Yeah. We're not gonna devolve down. We're not gonna. I love bring it. it down to that level of like this gnawing on fucking Jeff Bezos's ribs or nothing. We're not gonna yeah. go that far, but you know, we're just gonna. You know, We'll, yeah, we don't we'll have need, a little roast. And you know what else? We can also, like, we can get rid of the guillotine memes, too. You know, we, we don't have to have the guillotine. We can just have a picture of a blade. That way, you know, it's not, it's not really, it, it's, it's not the same thing. Like, you know, they're, they're not technically restricted like they would be in a guillotine. There's just a blade there. You yeah. know, the blade, the, the, the sword of Damocles, so to say, is could, what it could be, you know, representing hanging over them. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with this. I think this is a fantastic way of, of reaching, uh, of, of satisfying the unsatisfiable, so to say. I mean, I just yeah. think it's like one of those things where... Well, I know, you know the contrary the is pretty much passed at this point, but, you know, now that yeah. I think about it, I, I, you know, a yeah, solution could have been reached. Would have been a good idea. I'm sure they would have... Compromise totally position is always, you know... We know. It's always we, good. We know that, that people who are, are, you know, very defensive of rich people are often very willing to reach compromise, and they definitely yeah. don't, like, put you on a treadmill of constantly having to, to like... Uh, weaken your language so that you don't offend them and their sensibilities. You know, I mean, criticizing the rich while poor, jealous. Criticizing the rich while rich, hypocrite. Hypocrite. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Stu oh, I mean, criticizing that's the, the rich while too. middle class. You don't even have time to do that. You're yeah. fucking. You're uh, you're too busy middle fucking class. trying to keep from being poor. You don't exist anymore. What and are you like talking about? This narrow now. Yeah, it's like the middle class is like uh, if you have a job as an engineer at Google. You're the middle class. That's it. Yeah. Nobody else. That's, no one else. That's the entire middle class at this point. <laughs> uh, do you know anybody who would consider who would properly be middle class without being like independently wealthy from some random thing like being a really popular streamer or something or a Google Facebook? I always Apple thought it was weird to call the middle class maybe? anyway. Because, like it's not in the middle. It's just yeah, like no. you know what? Middle class is just like poor plus. <laughs> it is. It's 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 poor asterisk it's like yeah you're not poor right now but if there's like a if there's a like a small economic bump you're going to be poor because you don't really well, get all i'm saying is if, if jeff bezos is the top yeah then like you know the people who call themselves middle class they're not the middle right yeah <laughs> i mean they're like, like they're like if the you got someone worth a like quarter of a trillion dollars you're not in the middle because you get like a hundred thousand a <laughs> yeah, year or exactly something. you're just like right? slightly above well we you know we've talked about that too on this channel you know because a lot of people kind of a lot of people who are unfamiliar with like class politics and, and, you know, of course I'm a lefty. So like I talk about fucking class politics and shit all the time, but a lot of people come into it and they think like, all right, oh, well, class politics, one Oh one fuck rich people. There you I, go. Basically. Educated yes. you. Yeah. Basically you've, you've got it down. Rich people are sitting on like, like Scrooge McDuck. They're sitting on a giant, Thing of gold which could be saving you and everybody you love but they you know kind of drives me nuts i bet you it drives you nuts too is like the fucking um when you uh you criticize rich people or whatever and people are like people don't people just think it's it's all about the angle of like they have too much and it's not fair it's like yeah. that's not <laughs> that's not even the main criticism like the main <laughs> criticism is just like They've bought our entire political process. They control the discourse in this country. They rule over every fucking aspect of our lives. They decide what we can and can't say. I mean, like, it just goes on and on. Like, no one, like, at this point, the, gov the, the power the government has over you is, like, sort of, like, perfunctory because the government answers to the fucking wealthy elite. Literally, so. it's a, it's a it's a matter of it's a matter of rubber stamping or approving, right? I mean, this is like it gets laundered like this. Like, I mean, for example, like a great example is priv privatization is like one of the best examples of that, where it's like in America, like everything is gets privatized. Everything ends up privatized. All these government functions end up privatized, which means that some company, which is a subsidiary of some even larger company, usually one of like the big companies you already recognize, gets, you know, wins the bid, quote unquote, to do the contract for the government. So you end up with 
complete capture of every aspect of our society and and that the government as big or as small as it is doesn't really matter because its structure is to serve as a rubber stamping machine machine for the interest of the economy and i think that that's something that i wish people would pay more attention to and you know like it, it, it yeah, I'm glad to hear you talking about it because I think more people are becoming aware of this fact. Like, I think people have, like, people more and more have had these experiences of being like, yeah, w like, why is the, the government's always say, oh, you know, you're, we're looking out for the people. It's a government for the people, by the people, of the people, blah, blah, blah. But then you just find out that every aspect of your government has been privatized. That, like, oh, it's a private company that's owned by a conglomerate that's in partnership with whatever, uh, Pepsi, that's that's overseeing your local water supplies. That's here in my my state i just had this experience where most of our dmvs have been outsourced to these licensing companies that that get a paperwork from the state and then they send the paperwork to the state which results in huge wait times and no benefit for anybody except for the economy quote unquote which is these businesses now claiming that they're able to make you know money and turn it into the economy, but everybody else gets fucked. The government has to wait for things longer. People get angrier because you have to deal with shit like I did, where it's like they have you wait two weeks to be able to get a. You uh, know, the funny thing to me is like if you fucking bring up like a criticism of capitalism, a lot of conservatives today, they still kind of like give you this bullshit like fucking invisible hand of the market shit. Like, like that's still how it works. Like it's like, and then old Jeb decides that people in the community need hammers. And he decides to open Jib's hammer store. You know, yeah. it's like, shut up. Like, that's not even capitalism anymore, bitch. <laughs> it's not like, even it close. Pretty much never was, but like, yeah. at least it kind of, like, at least there was some mom and pop shit back in the day. Now there's fucking hardly anything. Everything's pretty much a corporate owned piece of shit. And even the shit that is mom and pop has to fucking get most of their supplies and shit from like Cisco or some other fucking giant corporation. Costco, yeah. So it's like, there's really not. There's really not fucking the mom and pop business anymore. There's not fucking any wealth being generated for the fucking people on the lower echelons. The idea of a small business is a fucking joke at this point. The idea of a small business in the world of Amazon where what what we've, you know, Amazon, once again, we could talk about a million things they've done. But one such thing is they will literally, if you sell your products on Amazon, they will sometimes just yoink your product and say, we like this product. We're going to produce our own version of it. And there's nothing you can do about it because you were selling it on our marketplace in the first place. So we retain the right to do this. And then they just make their own version of it for cheaper, which you can't do because you don't have a, a multinational corporation backing you. And then they just sell your product that you did all your hard Hard work so yeah this illusion of being like an entrepreneur is long gone it's been gone for a while it's never really fully existed because we all know that like uh that like you know you need money to start a business you need money to be able to have the education to start a business or to invent things whatever but again it's that it's that bar the bar has gone way up you don't just need to have a hundred thousand dollars from your parents now you're still fucked even if you got a hundred thousand dollars from your parents you're gonna need I a mean, million dollars you're gonna need this. at least there was the idea back in the day like the, the whole idea behind, like, the old-fashioned, like, American dream was, like, mm. you come to this country and, you know, you, you, you go and you work for a guy with a chain of hot dog stands and you save your money and then you buy your own hot dog stand and then you, you know, get your own street corner and you sell them hot dogs and before you know it, you got, you know, your own chain of hot dog stands and a few brick-and-mortar locations selling your hot dogs to the people. And it's like, wow. Wow, you work hard and you play by the rules and you get ahead and, you know, one day success finds you. It's the American fucking dream. And, like, anybody who still believes in that shit at this point is, like, Ooh. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not even... Is the R slur okay? Can we fucking no. say? I mean, no, yeah. no. Sorry, I let you get away with one T slur because you were doing sorry, it sorry, 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 them, sorry. But no, don't do the R slur. You'll get me canceled forever. I can say it about me, but <laughs> you can say it self referentially if you must. <laughs> Well, anyway, they're stupid or whatever I can say. Whatever word for that I'm allowed to say, that's the uh, one. You're all good. You're all good. Yeah. No. Nah, so. So. Uh. Yeah. No. Like. I. I agree with you. It, it's. It is. It is a. It is a ridiculous state that that like people think that that's the case. You know. Are you familiar with uh, Alpha Investments? You know the channel Alpha Investments by any chance? The Magic Card channel. Okay. So really no. cool channel. Guy who does like Magic Card tradings. And we were we watched one of his videos that I was like, guys, I want to show you something because like I watch some channels that aren't like super political. And uh, the guy from Alpha Investments, he's got a big channel. He does, again, magic card trading and stuff. So pretty normy stuff. And he had a video that was just called like a rant about how young people are fucked. 
and this this was a very it was a very normy perspective you know like not a whole lot of like super political language or anything like that and he was just talking about how like when he was when like when his dad was when he was a kid his dad was a restaurant manager and his and as a restaurant manager making like 50 60k a year for a chain restaurant he was able to finance easily a very comfortable home for their family to grow up in and it's like this the money the pay is literally the same you still make 50 to 60 as a chain restaurant manager now but that money doesn't go anywhere and additionally there have been all these weird ways uh, just below the like management position if you're like a server where like between tip sharing between all of these like new gig economy things where like people don't hire delivery people anymore so instead they just outsource it to a, an app that is going to be bidding for the lowest price everyone down the line is making th the same or less uh, with shares cut out of it because of all of these middlemen that are like, oh, well, you know, you use Uber Eats. Well, five dollars of the tip goes to this place. The delivery fee goes to the company. And then you get this amount at the end. And then you got to go do more deliveries. All of this has led to a position where even jobs that were considered like accessible, the job that you could go and, you know, it sucks, but you could work hard at and you could save some money. Those jobs do not exist. You are everyone who's not in a position of of incredible privilege is largely stuck on a wage treadmill and there and, and yet we can sit here and we can look at people like bezos getting richer than they've ever been through these periods of time well here's the thing like uh so i have a one of my co-hosts on my show deep fat fried uh paul zigo mm -hmm. likes to talk about uh you know his uh parents were uh both factory workers mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on a factory worker's salary, when he was growing up, they built, you know, they bought some land and built their own house on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like the idea of two factory workers buying land and building a house in modern day America is like, I mean, it's, it's like, it sounds like science fucking fiction. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it doesn't even bear any resemblance to reality anymore. Um, Which someone in the chat, someone in my tons. chat just said, can't believe a couple of fucking YouTubers are saying the mom and pop businesses aren't happening. You both run those types of companies, dude. Do you know, wait, what are oh, you fucking oh. talking about? Wait, so wait, our business is so contingent on YouTube and its approval or Twitch and its approval or any of these other fucking giant companies and their approval. Like, uh, I don't think a deep fat fried video has been monetized in like years. We pretty much rely on getting money from people to sell our patreon which is also a giant corporation that we have to sell also through takes a cut and also we have to fucking process our payments through companies like mastercard and american express and so on and so PayPal. forth yeah so i mean like there's like yeah the, the, we're we're fucking awash in corporate infrastructure the whole point the whole point is that even if you do have somehow have some sort of smaller operation going on that is ostensibly a business entity in America. It is so reliant on mega corporations and giant conglomerates that you might as well, you're just a little link in their chain. You're just not an official piece, but you're yeah. basically part of it. it, it well, and also like, okay, so you should tell that person to go check out the, uh, the, the recent Facebook, Google, uh, uh, giant leak, the, the, the Facebook papers as they're being called by AP news. Now, uh, that's a story that broke, uh, the large part of that story broke today. Go read about it. It's fucking un unbelievable. Will blow your mind. Uh, Google and Facebook have been behind closed doors, agreeing to not compete with each other in in uh, ad exchange markets. The ad exchange is owned by by Google, operated by Google. Google gives advantages to their own to their own rates, even though they charge higher rates than any competitors. And now they control somewhere around eighty percent of the ad space on the internet. Wild how that works. Almost like you don't actually have much of a say in that. And then we went and go and look at stuff like this. Like for example, my channel. A lot of my stuff gets demonetized. Uh, my my streams. Uh, are, I don't monetize them because I don't want people to get riddled by tons and tons of ads and not have a good viewing experience. But my videos do. In the the two years that I've been streaming on here, I've had like somewhere in the ballpark of five hundred and fifteen thousand watched hours of my content, and I've made like seven thousand dollars from ads in two years. That is an absurd. And I've had a lot of success. So like when somebody says like, oh, that's the store, the operation that you're running, we're the the rarest lucky few who managed to get through. There are people who grind like and even me, I'm grinding my breaking my back to run this show. And it's still almost impossible because you get nickel and dimed on every single level. Every bit that comes in, 
gets attacked. Every single sub that comes in, that gets attacked. Even on my own website, even though I went out of my way to have my own website where people can subscribe to me and not to the other service, still got to pay PayPal just for the a big chunk for just the, the transfer fees. So the idea, look, we're not, we are contractors. Legally, we're not even business. I mean, we can be business owners who hire a contractor, very weird structure, but YouTubers are contractors and the YouTube structure is designed to push you to joining up with Disney owned make, like maker networks and stuff like that. These big giant multi, multi channel networks that are ultimately owned by fucking Walt Disney Corporation. So no, that's not true. We're, we are small fish that have managed to swim around the big puddles of, of, of oil and not drown. And that's not a good thing. We shouldn't be celebrated. We shouldn't be celebrating the fact that like the vast majority of content creators never get to make any money, even though they make awesome shit, even though you guys watch their awesome shit and eventually they just die broke. Like that's terrible. That's not the world we should be fighting for. A handful of us managed to make it for one reason or another, but that's not like because we're some kind of like uh, uber mensch like fucking business people it's because of uh chance largely and also like uh uh like chance plus a bunch of a fuckload of inhuman effort that we all have to put in and some of us manage to luck out and other of us just die in obscurity i think that's bad i don't think we should do that so to that <laughs> chatter rethink your positions please you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> well you know he, he had a he said uh just sell your own ads you can yeah, make, yeah, totally. Just, la just lazy. Yeah, so, yeah so. absolutely. I'll I'll sell I'll, I'll sell my ads. Yeah. Uh, just tell me about where I can go get an ad. Where I can go independently uh, run ads on my YouTube video. Oh, wait, you can only run ads on your YouTube video from the Google Exchange. Ah, oh, strange. How interesting. Anyway, I love that. I love that kind of take. I love it when people like think they know everything about your industry and they don't. Yeah. When I'm not busy rallying against uh, the corporate stranglehold of America, I use, you know, Dollar Shave Club. And um, <laughs> yeah, I know I have a gigantic beard and doesn't look like I shave at all, but I do. Dollar Shave Club. You want to know gets what's you, wild? Get you a razor blade. You know those those like Dollar Shave Clubs and all that stuff? The, the way that those companies succeeded was by doing kind of what's being talked about here. So like, for example, there's this big company called like, a, there's like a company that produces razors called like Dorco or something like that. And they mm -hmm. like, they, they basically make like cheap razors and then other companies will buy those razors and put their branding on them and whatever. Well, Dorco was like, hey, like we can, we can sell our, our, our razors at like a good price. Well, it turns out that they ended up getting basically outmaneuvered by uh, Amazon and now uh, you can only buy, they only have their store available on Amazon and their prices went up. So now you literally can't even buy directly from the manufacturer of the, of the people who make stuff for like, I think Dollar Shave Club is the one that they make them for. Um, you can't even just go to the, like the same way they do. You have to like pay either the premium or just buy one of those other ones and group and companies like Harry's and Dollar Shave Club who were trying to like sell themselves like oh yeah you don't have to buy Gillette from Walmart at $18 a razor blade well now they're exclusively selling through partnerships with the Amazon marketplace increasingly and Walmart and their prices are crawling back up so well, you know back to square one it's like an interesting thing I noticed about you know because I've been on YouTube a very long time and I've seen a lot of like YouTube killers come along you know yeah yeah like, oh, this is going to be the one. And it's like, it's always like they start to succeed and then mysteriously, like, we're closing, guys. I'm like, hmm, hmm. wonder what happened, you know? Wonder what happened, yeah. I do really wonder hard. why you guys just, like, on the precipice of success, you just decided to throw in the towel. It's very, very strange. Yeah. Remember, it's almost remember like someone showed up with a big bag of money and said, hey... <laughs> Yeah, we don't want or the competition. Fuck a big you. bag of money with a little knife behind it says, "Hey, uh, we don't want the competition, uh, but uh, and if you if you don't accept our deal, maybe we'll just choke you out of our ad market so that nobody will work with you." Yeah, so really we bad. got a big bag of money, option A, or a bullet to the face, yeah. option B. What do you choose? It's like, Incredible. okay, well, I guess uh I guess uh, YouTube fucking competitor 9786D is out of business. Yep. Or you have. So I don't even fucking. When people show up to me now and they're just like, "Oh, dude, you this is gonna be the YouTube killer." I'm just like, "Uh, eh, yeah, yeah, we'll see." Yeah, I'll, I don't uh, know. I'll see. I'll believe it when I see it. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know if they're even. I don't even know if like I feel like we're almost past like that era. 
Like, I don't think that, like, I think the way that things are, are uh, monopolized, the degree to the to the amount of monopoly we see online, like we were, again, covering earlier the, the Facebook papers. Anybody who's interested in this should go read the Facebook papers. Um, but, you know, the level of monopolizing and, and, and trust behavior uh, between huge, these monolithic corporations is to a degree that, like, I don't know that we can actually, I don't know that there can ever be a YouTube killer. Like, because it's not allowed there's not allowed to be a youtube killer the too big to fail thing kicks in where it's like oh if there's a youtube killer well then all of these other industries are going to have a crash which are now like in coots with youtube same thing goes with google like google is able to just uh absorb everyone in and then do whatever the hell they want because there's no other options anymore same thing as amazon it's the same basic business model of just choking out everybody else using you know wielding finance capital it's very disappointing i think that like I think that like where the hope lies for a better world is in uh, is is in like sort of resisting the way that all these structures want us to use them and to use them in creative ways and to be unapologetic in how we decide to shape the world ourselves. I think that's really like I don't know. I feel like that's where I fall on things, but maybe that won't even work. It's possible that the doomers are all right, but I tend to not like <laughs> I tend to believe that that's like kind of pointless. Like I, I don't think there's much of a value in 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 like concluding that it's that it's it's bad, even if it is really bad. Even I, I think we should acknowledge it and we should try to re, you know, try to understand what it is we're going up against, but that we can't really know how things are going to play out. So even if it's. Great, yeah, I, I kind of have it. an expectation of uh, of uh, of the worst. Yeah. possible scenarios and outcomes i just like yeah that's how that's probably how it's gonna go down but i always just say like well you know you gotta even if a fucking you know uh axe murderer is coming to kill me i'm probably gonna try to fight back you know like yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. that's kind of like my mentality is like well you know you, you you're probably gonna die but hope you survive and that's kind of how i feel about humanity or uh this country or or any of that stuff just like well you're probably gonna die but you gotta fight to survive nonetheless yeah, have a good time on the way out and and, and whatever you know uh there's a there's a there's a there's a rule in my in my chat which is uh, rule number one do not fucking die that is our rule and and uh the reason why i make that a rule is because like i i very much believe that we should you know resist to resist to to our our last breath that we should you know try to try to make the world the way we believe it uh, as as far as we can and and never give up on that and uh so that's like one of the rules that i i say frequently of course my chat is now saying all the rules uh the the rule rule one do not die um but 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 yeah like it's grim the the state of the economy and the state of like the way that that like the the worldview of our current like uh, I guess I would say, I guess you could say the social milieu of America is in a rough spot right now. And I hope to see a better future. Um, I think there's room for really cool things to get done. Like, I mean, obviously, like I did a big like fundraiser on Saturday for some mutual aid things. And that was super, super inspiring. So good things can still be done. Um, even if we don't have the silver bullet answer to all of the problems. Well, I just um, feel like, I don't know. I'm looking, uh, I just look at the world and I see like, all right, so... We got climate crisis, droughts dominating the east. I'm sorry, the west coast. You know, you have so many of the east coast cities that are going to be subject to like floodwaters and stuff. You got acidifying oceans. You got mass die-offs of animals. You got mass die-offs of insects. You got mass die-offs of fish. You got mass die-offs of entire ecosystems, uh, planets wide. <laughs> uh, like the biomass of insects has like decreased like 15% or something in the last 10 years. You can look up the exact, exact statistic. It's grim, whatever it fucking it's, is. It's bad. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, the rich get rich, the poor get poor. The population seems largely oblivious to like the true nature of the, uh, crises that face them. um, Technology is increasingly making the one bargaining chip that the lower class has had, which is labor, increasingly irrelevant. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't. <laughs> it seems pretty fucking grim to me, but we always got maybe. We always, fuck. We always got. I mean, here's the little thing. engine that could, I guess, but it seems pretty fucking grim, dark from where I'm sitting. I think it's kind of grim, but also 
there's another thing, which is that, you know, if it's grim, well, then isn't that isn't that the time for us to th- start thinking of more uh, more bold and, and brave solutions to the world? I think no, the time was like, like 30 years ago. OK, but, true, yeah. true. Yes. I think that would have been more ideal. But, you know, as the saying goes, the best time to have planted a tree is 20 years ago and the second best time yes. is today. So, yeah, true, uh, true. yeah. I mean, I, I tend to think that, like, look, we are facing a lot of things. And if, if people can acknowledge those and we can say, no, wait a second, like we don't have to accept like a a a world that uh, you know we don't have to just lay down and die we ha- we can say no we're going to do things differently we're going to try things differently and sure we might have failures we might have things that don't work or or bad ideas or whatever but let's at least give it a try because the alternative is to just st- sit here and let like jeff bezos basically choke you until you die and i'm not willing I, that for me like that's not an acceptable world i'm going to you know uh, I'm going to try and find every crack that I can and poke at it. And, you know, sometimes that requires us being right. a little creative, you know? I and, guess and, I'd feel yeah. better if I could, like, commiserate with people more often and hear that they, you know, were concerned about these things. Yeah. But I feel like all too often the things that I hear people say they're concerned about are so far afield from <laughs> the actual crises that face them that I'm just, like, yeah. completely discouraged. Like, the if you know like if it was like if things were just as bad as they are now but i got a real sense that people understood the predicament they're in i'd be like way more hopeful i'd be like wow maybe we can fucking figure out something to solve this but like the fact that there's just so many fucking people who are talking to me about fucking haitian immigrants and trans bathrooms and whatever the fuck other stupid bullshit distractions are being paraded in front of them uh i don't know i find that to be probably the most uh, doomery thing yeah. of all. Yeah, <laughs> Just it is. the complete lack of willpower in like everyday people to give a shit. But uh, I don't know. I, I made a lot of people mad on on Twitter when I I made a uh, I made a post that said Americans have the weakest souls of any people on the planet. And, oh, uh, I love that tweet. That was my. That was the tweet that <laughs> got me to decide to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, when I saw yeah. that tweet, I was like, "That's. I need to talk to her. This is like, 100 <laughs> percent needs to happen." It's so true. Like I, Just, like I, I know. Like of course they proved me right immediately in being the most. Oh God, they were so mad. The number of people who are like, "This is disgusting. This is like genocidal rhetoric. This is racism." I got multiple, literally multiple people accusing me of racism for saying America. Americans of weak souls and then i got lectured to by some like medium-sized like liberal social democrat streamer who was just like oh oh yeah like this is this is like what are you talking about what is a soul like what do you mean like you, do you not understand like a tweet <laughs> first of all do you not understand like metaphor at all like are you incapable of reading something and like parsing that it has meaning like let me ask you a question when you encounter a person like that that literally comes at you with some like you know you what, what do you mean by soul? You know, like yeah. when someone comes to you in that way, do you just assume that they're pretending to be stupid so that it seems like they can have a position and that's just the only way they can even have one? Because like they know what you mean by soul. Yeah. Everyone knows what the fuck is intended by that, right? Yeah. I mean, Or I are they really that stupid like- where they're just like, what do you mean by soul? I feel like it's like a mix. I feel like what I like to call it is I like to call it like performative denouncing where it's like, it's not, they're not actually, it's like, it's kind of like virtue signaling, right? Like, but not exactly. It's like, they have to, they feel like they, they don't like me and they feel the need to say, to say something about it because there's something in there that makes them feel uncomfortable. So there's something they're really bothered about, but maybe Maybe it's, I don't know how much they're actually bothered about, but then they go, okay, so here's how I can stretch this to make it like this big performative denouncement. And then their friends go, oh yeah, look at that. You made fun of evil demon mama. She's so bad. She hates Americans. She's racist. She's all this shit. And I'm just like, come on. Like guys, we know what you, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When I say Americans have weak souls that like by and large, Americans just kind of put their head down and walk into the, into the fucking slaughterhouse. They're just like, yeah, okay. Like even the Americans who are like all gung ho and waving the american flag they're like yeah yeah I, I, i'm fi- i'm fine with us just seven seven hundred and forty thousand americans dead yeah and i'm like dude you're literally you're you're being loud and you're waving your american flag 
into the into the slaughterhouse. Like <laughs> I, I say frequently, I've said multiple times. The last time I made a tweet like this, I was much smaller. I didn't have as much of a following, and nobody really cared as much. Some people did get mad, but I said that Americans are like, in my opinion, cowed. Like, that's what it feels like. A lot of Americans just have no fighting spirit left whatsoever. They're completely given up. They think that this is the only way the world has ever been and will ever be, and they hate it, but it's the only thing they know, so they defend it to the death. They're like, no! I love it. Like Just like, like the, the giant fucking meat grinder where, um, <laughs> you know, some people just, like, they trudge into it, <laughs> and they just walk in, and then other people are like, charge into the meat grinder you know it's just like yeah be a patriot be a real real <laughs> patriot would be a good cannonball into the grinder Whee! and then they just throw themselves in yeah it's Dad, just it's time to die boys Woo! <laughs> i mean right like that's like the people that's like those like there's those people who put the uh the the big smog smoke coffer things on the back of their f ford f-350 where it's just like yeah it's just like they're proud they're proud yeah ooh, mm, pollution let me just wrap my mouth around this Ooh, i love it i love oh i love oh, i love carbon monoxide and it's just like dude like what are you actually signaling here like what do you do you really like do you really realize what you're doing it's such a it's such a pathetic and cowed i have no respect for this type of person and like yeah uh, like i think you know obviously i think there's a lot of americans who are victimized and i talk about that all the time but let's be real americans are like like we have it like the least bad of everyone in the world It's still pretty fucking bad. And obviously people can only know where they live up, but Americans just whine and that's it. That's the most they can ever do is whine very weakly. And it's like the Democrats, like you'll have, you'll have people mad at the Republicans, rightfully mad at like this horrible, horrifically racist party that just like literally advocates cracking the skull of protesters who are ex exercising their first amendment rights. And then the Democrats come in and they're like, well, we have to work with them. And then everyone's just like, well, I guess that's just it. I guess we just got to stop. You know what? Well, what the thing that drives do? me nuts is just like, you have this, the world we're talking about, all the really serious issues facing us and like a really like, <laughs> I won't, if, if I'm not going to say a bleak future, I'll say like some very serious <laughs> hurdles and challenges that mm -hmm. face us and then like you have like a politician like a bernie sanders type who's just like begin just like begins to lay the groundwork for for shit that we probably should have done 30 years plus ago yeah and and it's just like that's too extreme for them it's like oh <gasps> Oh, I don't know. Oh, he's, he's an extremist. He's a radical. Oh, we need Joe Biden. Need Joe Biden. It's like, yeah, oh, my so God. Socialism. It's going to be socialism. It's going to be like when and I then, saw that picture of the beans, the, the, the bean aisle in Venezuela. And it's like, bitch, have you been to a grocery store lately? Like you go to the fucking grocery store and it's you got you got two different bean types. Both of them are canned in fucking uh, high fructose corn syrup and picked by slave labor. Congratulations. You have successfully fallen for the illusion of choice. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, it's just such a weird, again, the things that Americans fixate on is so weird to me. Like, just think of how but then it's like, I, I, I love this. Like when I was, when there was a uh, Bernie was running last time and it was like, maybe we're, maybe we're going to try to fucking generate record youth vote, record youth vote, record youth vote. And it's like, okay, we didn't get it. It didn't show up any fucking greater than usual, but you did have record old people vote. You had record elderly vote. It's like, yep. what? So they were jet. Wait, so they were jazzed up. They saw Bernie Sanders and he drove them to go to the polls to vote against him. But the people who fucking were supposed to give a shit, the people who have the most to lose because they have the most future in front of them are just like, meh, I yeah. don't give a shit. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, and, I don't and, know, like, and it's hard if you're not going to save yourself, why the fuck should I care if you're saved at some point? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I mean, there's two, there's two sides to it. Cause like on one hand, there is this, like this sort of like almost arrogant resignation in even the most, the most like downtrodden people in America of like, oh yeah, well, you know, America's the best it could ever be. So if my life is miserable, well, I guess there's just no better. Nothing could it's ever on be me, better. man. Yeah. It's all on me. And then there's the other side of it, which is just like, you have people who's the only life that they've lived in America is like, uh, it, it is like one of res of perpetual recessions and like their parents being screwed over by Wells Fargo and Wells Fargo not facing like any repercussions for that. And like, uh, they just witness like their friends get their 
their skulls caved in for saying like hey maybe we shouldn't literally murder innocent black people and then like the cops just fire riot munitions at them like you know that i covered that shit back when all the those were going and it was egregious just the amount of egregious nothing ever happens with regard to it they just get away they walk free black bag protesters walk away free and so they go i don't fucking care about this i'm gonna do my own fucking thing fuck this shit and they don't want to turn up to the polls and people act surprised people act surprised by that nah somebody's got to talk to those people somebody's got to reach those people and offer them something other than you put your you put your quarter into the pachink into the electoral pachinko machine and eventually it might land on a candidate who might think that you're a human and not human capital stock like i i understand like where where people's frustration comes from on that I and mean, if it I, came down to like burning if it came down to like joe biden and fucking pete buddha judge or something i could forgive people for just being like meh whatever but like bernie sanders actually had some fucking policy proposals that moved things a little bit in the direction they needed to go in right. and no one showed up no one gave a shit even people who were like in polls were like yeah I'll, i mean if it comes if you bitch to the general i'll vote for him but like are you gonna vote in the primary though it's like no yeah no i don't really give a shit like okay cool gotcha it's wild so it's like, too. I mean, I'm not saying electoralism is the answer or whatever, but like yeah. you could have like you could have moved things a little bit in a better direction. Um, you, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd love to see that, too. And then and then like and there's again, there's like another another thing. There it's like Obama derangement like, syndrome, though, too. Sorry. To yeah. No, but no, no, no. That's fine. Just throw that throw that out there as well. Yeah, there is Go, a certain amount of that. Like but also like there has also been a uh, a often like helped by the democrats like disassembly of their own uh paths to victory because they realized that like oh wait if we build grassroots support this grassroots support could go against us because we're not very popular so we might build things and so like you know you have like obama undercutting like acorn which acorn was like a massive social services program that also taught people how to participate in in primaries yeah it but conservatives decided they didn't like it so we had to like yep, had to be throw down. it on the sacrificial altar to appease the unappeasables yeah, and and like there's there's you know a big problem of reaching uh students uh in, in, in you know young people in to participate in politics at all. They a lot of people just don't know because first of all like the, the our fucking school system barely teaches people how fucking elections work. I had to learn on my own, and this was me like when when I was younger, I was like uh, you know I grew up in a in a cult. I was like super conservative, but I had to go learn myself how to participate in a um in a in a primary. I never taught was taught that in school. I was taught that by my my you know my dad took me to a place and then I talked to the people there and they told me how to vote in the primary and like I was told that because my church was like oh we got to go vote in the primary to influence things and in you know but there's just none of this like the Democrats don't don't push for this. The, our society like almost prides itself on on uh ignorance of our own systems so there's all these people who just are just like oh, i gotta fucking show up to my job again i gotta go do six ubers uh between my on my lunch break and they're just gone and i just i want to i want to see people fucking give up i want to see people get rid of that cowardness i want to see people get fucking pissed and want to do something and want to live a better world and i think sometimes that requires people being willing to be like no like i have a right to i have a right to stick to put my foot down I well have the a problem right is say, they're so like a lot of them are so fucking cowed that like even the idea like even if you fucking lay out your fucking vision for like here's utopia right yeah you lay it out to them and they're like yeah 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 well yeah you're right well yeah i agree all right, so here's what we gotta do. Well, no, I mean it could never actually happen, though. You know, it's a bunch of. It's like your your fucking belief that it can't happen is like the main reason why not. You know that, right? Yeah, I mean that is you're a an, true. Thing. You're an active participant in it not happening at this point, where you're just like, nah, because it's too unrealistic. Other people would never go for it. It's like you did, I did. Yeah. Why not? People do do that. If there's a weird way of which in which people have like, uh, you know, they say kill the cop in your head. You know that sort of that sort of statement. Yeah. You've probably heard that before. I mean, that's really true, isn't it? Like, there, there's this one thing I, I criticize frequently on politics, uh, in like politics spaces. It's like people use this thing of like, oh, that's not pragmatic. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, everybody thinks like it's such a useless thing to say. Everyone thinks their idea is pragmatic. Like, if you it like. The pragmat like people talking bringing up pragmatism is something that annoys me so much because i'm like okay if you if there's an actual like practical issue that's blocking what i'm saying tell me what it is 
and let's find I just a ask him like, it. is what's going on now pragmatic? Yeah. Is this, are we living in the, so wait, is your contention that we live in the most pragmatic of possible societies now? Cause it doesn't even seem to be functional, let alone pragmatic. Yeah, it's not like, so it's like not, if it's we're living in, if we're going to fucking choose something that ain't pragmatic, let's at least go for the good one. Yeah, it's like a weird modern thought terminating cliche that like is that exists even among like even among like progressive and liberal. Just another. It's just, I mean, I've, I know I'm sounding like conspiratorial, but like another rich person psyop, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, psychological I so operation. Too. Hey, there's a meme for you. Oh, well, yeah, things do suck, but it's inevitable. So yeah, history, <laughs> just fucking right? accept it, bitch. Yeah, just just drink drink just just drink on down your 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 bug pace. You will live in the pod. You'll eat the you'll eat the bugs. Like and they no, show you... us the dystopia, and then we're like, I feel like we used to like if you watch a you I know you you kind of like some movies and shit. You watch like a movie in like the seventies or something, and you see a dystopia. There was always like yeah. an idea of you're being told about this in this movie, and they, I'm getting conspiratorial here, but no, it's okay. Don't I'll worry. I'll preface it, we, but like go into it. 60s 70s whatever you see a dystopia it's always like a warning like uh oh better fucking do something now before this happens yeah. right yeah. it's always like some element of society has gone so out of control that people are like showing you some dark future where it's like what if this trend continues to this extreme and it's like wow yeah so people use sci-fi as like a means to criticize the present by showing a dark future right right exactly uh, the Saying, dystopian like, look fiction at the trends like look but at the trends like you could say i feel like, like uh, yeah. i feel like now when i see a dystopian fiction it almost feels like it's not so much a warning as a pre as a preparation just like you know this is like now it's like well uh, so everyone in the future lives in like a giant trailer park where there's just units stacked up on top of each other And the only thing they can really do to escape it is play this fucking video game talk about like ready player yeah, one yeah. kind of shit Yeah, and it's just like I look at it. and I'm like this doesn't even feel like we're criticizing this It's just like Reporting. except this. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it's okay like uh, re it's like a recolor. It's like, oh yeah, this is just what we're going towards. Like, oh, they're just you priming seen, you now. Do, do you want to see it? Like, uh, have you seen? Uh, have you seen? Sorry to bother you. No. You gotta see it. You gotta see Boots Riley. Sorry to bother you. Fucking fantastic film. A, a an actual modern dystopia that like, uh, it the the premise is basically the premise is basically like the the world it. The, the main character works ends up working for a company that's basically Amazon, and their new venture is uh, housing units. They, they're they're multi person housing units that that everybody has a bunk bed, and you get your own bunk bed, and they're like sold like oh yeah, you can have your own custom space for the low low cost of this, and like the rent is so ridiculous that like the main character is in the beginning like living in the garage in like his uncle's garage and so there's like this really funny scene where they're like him it's like a really romantic scene and whatever and then the garage door opens up because his like uncle sat on the garage door remote and it's just like okay so it starts to unravel and you see like the state of things that's a fantastic movie that does that without like copping out because it's like it was a, an independent production and, and stuff like that a lot of times nowadays what you see is like what you were exactly what you were saying like ready player one and these others where it's just like there isn't even a coherent critique. It's just like the world sucks and like the way that you're the way that you're going to do it is by being the best version of the of the person in that world, like a being yeah, like, you're going to be the hero that that, the, that I don't know. I I was I was watching it. I couldn't get through it cuz it was so fucking awful, but like I was watching that 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 film trying to like I guess get through it. I, I didn't really get as far as I wanted. I had to like stop and then re watch some reviews and synop read some synopsises and shit because I couldn't get through the actual fucking film itself. But like, it's just like amazing to me that you have a film set in this horrible dystopian world where the main concern of the hero is just to excel within the escapism of that world, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm the best in the escapist fucking thing that we go to to because the world sucks. It's like that. And that's the hero of the fucking thing. Like you're shown this horrible vision of the future. And then the objective of the fucking protagonist of the story is get really good at the fucking video game so you can become a billionaire. It, and yeah. people spend too much time playing the video game. You ask me, it's like. What? No, they don't. If this is the world, of course, they should spend as much time in there as fucking possible. Uh, of course. But, they don't have anything else. Yeah. But like, why is this movie not about 
trying to fix that, you know, or like warning us like, hey, this is your future, people. Don't let this happen. No, it's like, wow, this video game is cool. Yeah. It's almost like, well, we're going to live in horrible trailer nightmares, but you're going to have some cool graphics. It's like, hey, you get good graphics. Okay, well, uh, just oh, like, hey, all right, flush this fucking entire civilization down the fucking toilet. I don't know. <laughs> It's time to Yo, go. Oh, hey, listen, I, I believe very much in that. Something that I say frequently to my chat is that one of the things I'm most interested in in thinking about politics, in creating art, is imagining new ways of being. Um, this is something I borrowed from a, a couple of uh, anarchist writers that I thought were really influential to me, and I really liked that their focus was on finding new ways of being, because the current modern era is very much about setting people into a very limited set of paths, the way that you can live your life, the way that you're supposed to live your life, and the ways that you're supposed to live your life are conveniently uh, geared to make you a cog in Jeff Bezos's money-making machine. And so a lot of modern anarchist uh, writers and thinkers have been sort of positing ways that we can resist that with our decisions and with our organization and with the way that we engage with each other. So that's something I like to think about a lot because I certainly don't want to live in a uh, in a, a, a trailer park uh, stack where you the only the only possible enjoyable you know thing that you can have is uh is is this second life video game i mean man wouldn't it be cool if we we had a world that was enjoyable to socialize in and we could make that world better with video games wouldn't that be fucking cool <laughs> yeah, yeah no nah, it's like right now it's like i mean even in i mean i like even in video games it's like you could point to something offhand just like the like epidemic of like child gambling and loot box mechanics like even our video games have been like we don't even we're not even allowed to enjoy those without being plied with like this forced addiction. It's so such a sad way of like of us living, and and I feel it cheapens everything that we consider like truly enjoyable about being humans. You know, I was talking earlier today about uh, something I talk about relatively frequently about how uh, social media, like I think social media is both like a a great a great gift and a great curse, like. I have met like my partners through social media. I've met so many people through social media. My job is only possible through social media. But I look at social media in its current state and the way that it that it operates and I just think this is like a prison. Like I feel like I've been built into a prison. And on one hand, like I can't imagine a life where I didn't have social media to connect with people because like I lived in a like a rural area and I was a queer person and I, I was in this like really bad religious environment. But then I look at social media, I see, wait a minute, but on the larger scale, the way social media is right now is perpetuating a society that's more like the one I tried to escape before. And that makes me sad. And I, I oh, want to yeah. think that like that there's a, a future where social media enhances our actual lives. And there's and a phenomenon that uh, I don't know that if it I don't know if it has a term or whatever. I guess you could just almost consider it just like selling out or something. Yeah. But um, it, it's. It's something I've noticed just seems to happen over and over again. I've seen it happen in my life quite a few times. The earliest example I can think of is like MTV. Mm -hmm. Like how when MTV started, it was like this like place for like the, these like music videos, of course. And there were still commercials ultimately for albums and stuff. But yeah. like there was like a means of like uh, these these musicians are creating these like visual accompaniments to their music and it's there's this channel that's just devoted to it. And it's going to play that all the time and everything. And, and, you know, it's like, wow, that's kind of cool. And there's like a lot of this like free form creative stuff. And there's a lot of times they don't have huge budgets. So they got to be very creative and do wild stuff to get attention. Kind of like the early days of YouTube, yeah. which is kind of like why I'm drawing the comparison. Um, but like, you know, and then slowly but surely it's like the, the corporate sort of culture intrudes upon the space to this extent where it's like becomes an unrecognizable fucking thing where, you know, um, MTV went from music videos to reality shows and so did pretty much every other television channel once they realized like, ooh, this is where the money's at. This is the fucking content. Uh, you, know, it's, you, you know, take away any sort of like artistic integrity or intellectual fucking merit or any of that stuff and just give them, give them garbage. Just fucking push yeah. garbage in front of them 24-7 and let, give them salacious and fucking this and that. And, you know, whatever. We're, we're participants in that too because, you know, like the the, the people are, you know, you know, so to some extent fucking choose that shit, but kind of like there's no like it's it's so foisted upon us all the time. Where it's like, here's this. Here's this garbage. Here's this yeah. salacious drivel. And now, you know, YouTube, which when I started on it was a platform for like sort of 
Like it went from feeling like a place where all the people who couldn't tell you how they really felt in day to day lives were finally giving like a megaphone and stuff to a place yeah. that feels like high school or something like, yeah, you know, it's it's like it's I think a term that like, it's transformed into this weird yeah. lunch. I heard someone say that like lunch table leftism the other day. It's like yeah. lunch table everything. Yeah, uh, I it's, mean, it's, it's that about the and also like and the fucking, you know, uh, whatever. You know, I, I think there's a I think you're onto something to to a cer to like a certain degree with that. I think like it's funny because like some of it is a, like I would say some of the lunch table stuff like comes from like the fact that there is no uh there is it's like a, it's like a how do I even describe this? Uh it's like a we're we're tossed into like a coliseum, you know? When you like I I certainly know this was my experience. When I first started getting into content creation, I didn't know like a whole lot about the space. I didn't know anybody. Um there's no real you don't get like in there's no like training. You just kind of throw stuff at a wall. And so I think what happens is like, you know, people kind of cling to these like the like small groups at first and then it can get really severe, especially when the like uh, and it can become very clicky, especially when the like internal pressures of the space are like they are. Because right now it's like, uh, you're competing against Walt Disney Corporation again. And there's this like a lot of people would call this like co-option, where it's like something that starts good slowly gets just taken over by the people that it was originally designed to sort of like resist against a little bit. Right. Like it's like with we MP can, MTV. it's like let's get away from this. Like hey. Let's get away from this uh, monolithic corporate entertainment. Oh yeah. wait, it's now it's here. And yeah, it's where's here. our next? Where's the next escape? There isn't one. They've blocked off all the exits. You know, it's like yeah, okay. you you can't go anywhere, and so you end up having to like increasingly dig your heels into whatever your brand is until your brand can be bought or your brand can be uh, removed or whatever. So it, it forces people into these really tense circumstances, which once again only make money for Google who owns YouTube and Disney who owns like the bigger maker networks or multi-channel networks. And, and, and I don't know, there's so much, there's so much tension that I do think that it does yield into these, this, this, like, instead of having like big, robust, vibrant spaces with lots of different successful creators and many different factions, all of whom have like, you know, are, are like interested in co some of whom are, are interested in cooperating so there may have beefs or whatever this, like instead of having an organic space you instead have like a space of people who are all starved desperately for the for every bit that they can get because if you don't you don't get to do that and you have to go be an uber driver or whatever it's like we've just we've just created this uh environment i i the word i usually use to describe it is um not tension but um but uh it, it's very Hmm. What's the word? Uh, I, I can't. I'm, I'm. I'm like blanking on the on the word that I'm thinking of here. Um, it's very forced or or. Mm, what's the word? God, I can't. Coercive. Think of it Not. It is coercive. Yes, for sure. But it's uh. It's it's strained or uh, it's not quite the word but whatever strained works in this case all of our social engagements all of our work all of our lives have have become so absorbed into economy into making something for money that you see these these like i have a uh <laughs> i have a character well it's not really a character but i uh i often reference uh the economy as a god yeah uh, called economos <laughs> i just say like all hail economos every time someone does something strictly for economic reasons even though it makes no sense right all hail economos all hail deus economos. ex machina <laughs> i was like all right yeah, yeah deus vault all it, hail it economos is, there, there is a worship there is like a, a sense of religion around it like a secularized religion around this this vague sense of economy um you know it's funny uh like uh are you familiar with the the like the video essayist uh, big joel I don't know if you're familiar with him. Maybe you are. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. A really good video essayist. I really like him. He's got like a super dry sense of humor, but he did this really incredible video that was called, um, fuck, what was the title of it? It's called like YouTube is your boss or something like that. And it's a video that talks about, it like compares, um, the whole premise of the video is basically takes like YouTube's creator studio videos and compares them to like employee training videos. And it talks about how like, in, in the current era, there's this idea that like every, you're sold this idea like, oh, we're helping you. Like we're, we're helping you make your channel good. But if you look a little deeper, they've just found a way to sort of reword basically that they're telling you how to do their, your job. Instead of just saying, take the cup, 
put it into the into the ju juice filling machine, press the large cup button, and then it fills. They say, well, you know, if you would like to have your channel succeed, make a video with these parameters. Make sure that you do this for it to be, there's literally a part where they're like, we highly recommend using our recommended ad placement option to get the most out of your, it's like, wait, they're just telling you a job description. You're being sort of subtly given a job description. And this is, this is true in so many ways that like, that that economy like it's like the religion of the economy everything ca can't be people aren't making a, a channel to have a good time to make a community for anything it's all about making the most efficient ad clicking product that you possibly can yeah the strange world of youtube's corporate propaganda that's the name of the video thank you well, i remember there was a very different thing it was uh like when i first joined there was no monetization on youtube it was just yeah. like people just doing it for like the sheer enjoyment of it and uh you know uh i remember thinking you know when i first got um a video when they first uh, you know started doing monetization i was just like eh whatever i never i'm never the person that's smart enough to jump on something right away i'm always like eh fuck that let's see if it proves itself and you know after a while i was like it seems like this monetization's here here to stay and i i saw so like opt in for it and all this stuff and i got i made a video called like sarah palin sucks or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. and uh because it was like when she was a thing and um what a terrible so time. it got yeah, I know, and it got super popular. It got like a million views and shit, and I made a shit ton of money. I was like, whoa! And I just stopped everything I was doing in my life. I'm like, this is my job now. I'm, I'm going to get to do what I love for a job. And it's like, well, <laughs> that's a double-edged sword right there. Yeah. You know, because it, it was like, it went from being fun to being work. And I'm not saying it's not fun anymore, but like, you know, it's not as much fun when it's like, if I don't do this, I don't eat. So <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it you, is. Of course, you know what I mean. It, it, of course, yeah. Like, I mean, and and like, this is something I talked. I've I've talked about pretty pretty heavily on this channel. I try to be pretty open about like, uh, you know, I try to be as open and human as I can without like it, people being weird about it. Because of course, people can be weird about it. But like, I took a break um recently for like a month and a half, and I feel very lucky that I was able to do that. There was a lot that was that it was going on. I have uh, earlier this year, I dealt with like, it, I mean, I'm. It's, it's cooled down a little bit, but I was dealing with a fuckload of harassment. Long, long story. Um, just really, really bad. And I, so I was like, I need to get away from this space. And I realized, like, I knew it was there, but when I took the time off, I realized just how much of a boot had been on my neck. That, like, every moment of every day, I was thinking, I should be streaming, I should be doing this, or else I'm going to fall out of the algorithm and die. And then I'm never going to get to do this thing that I love anymore. The tension is so high and it seems to only be getting higher. And like, I look at like a lot of, like a lot of content creators in this space. I see people who just work their butts off. They will break oh God, their yeah. fucking backs. And like, uh, and, and there's like such a, there's obviously a huge distance between like what the, what the, the, the audience's perception is of the experience. But there is even like sometimes a, 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 per, a perception like issue from our perspective we're like we don't even we forget how much we actually work and like we all know yeah we're working really hard and we feel it ourselves but then we zoom out and we go oh my god if like this was the type of schedule or or work environment that was encouraged this is like lawyer shit like in movies of the past this would have been like oh yeah the lawyer who has to go in all the time and his family life sucks i'm like wait a minute that's what we're having to do <laughs> for being a youtuber like i spend like it's like when i'm not on stream i'm prepping for stream i'm talking to people who, who i need to do something we're organizing shit i got a team of people that i'm trying to pay to get the edits out on time i'm like oh my god they really figured out how to make us build our own workplace for them. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. And then they get the profit, most of it. The vast majority. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've definitely, like, over the course of my career, I've definitely made, like, millions of dollars for fucking YouTube. Yeah. So I'm oh, not a millionaire. Whatever <laughs> whatever you've made, like, I always try to tell people this, like, whatever you, like, whatever people think that we've made, the amount of money that that platform has made off of us is is so much further that literally even we can't comprehend it because we don't even, I mean, even they, know. The full it's at the point now where they'll just, well, they'll put ads on your video and not even give you, like, a cut. It's just like, yep. here's, yeah, we're uh, putting an ad on there, but we're not giving you any of some, so, uh, yeah, there you go. This yeah. actually goes to uh, this other company because they they uh, did this thing or whatever. So here you go. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, that's cool. I'm glad you could uh, make some money off me. That's neat. <laughs> really yeah, and love that's you. not even to talk about, like, that's not even to talk about the DMCA shit because no one mm -hmm. can do that. There is no possible way. I get, D there's like, there's, it's so busted. I, I got a, I played a Phasmophobia, if you know that game, little ghost hunting game just yesterday. I got a, mm -hmm. a, a, a copyright 
uh, claim if if I had monetized that video, which I don't usually monetize the live streams because I don't want to run ads on people. But if I had, I would have lost monetization to that because some random company bought claimed a stretch of white noise that plays over the radio Here, in Phasmophobia. So here's what here's the thing. Here's how broken it is. I fucking went to uh, we we went, we started to we we did this thing where we were watching uh, for our patrons. We'd watch uh, movies and uh -huh. we'd comment on them and stuff. And yep. so like at first we just tried to find movies that were so fucking old and shitty that it was like no one was gonna fucking care. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't enough. So then we started doing like all right, we're just gonna watch films that are in the fucking public domain. Okay. But even public domain films aren't fucking safe because someone will go find like a little snippet of fucking someone on the radio in the public domain film and be like, I own this. And then they monetize the fucking shit. Yep. So it's like, eh, you just can't win. People, it's, it's people don't even impossible. have to fucking prove they're actually the copyright holders anymore. And even if they do, it's like by the time you can fucking get it to fall off, 60 days or whatever has passed. It doesn't even fucking matter because the video's got whatever views it's going to fucking get anyway. Yep. And, 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 and of course, notice it's all deferred onto contractors. We're the ones who have to cope with it. We're the ones who have to file it. Not them. They don't have to prove they own it. We have to prove that they don't own it. It yeah. is ridiculous. It's absurd. Guilty and, and, with copyright uh, violation and you're guilty till proven innocent. Exactly. And it, it, it's really <laughs> wild, the state, the, the state that we found ourselves in. And, and again, there are parallels to other industries, right? Like look at Uber. With Uber, you got to have your own car insurance. You got to bring your own car. They don't pay you a salary. You you pick up shit off the app. And uh, most importantly, they make it feel like uh, it, it, there's a psychological effect, which is that, oh, well, you're not working right now? Well, you could be making money on, on Uber right now. Why are you not working? Well, oh, you need time to rest? Well, I'm glad you're taking your self-care time. But if you take a little too much of that, well, it's, it's your fault. You could have been getting money on Uber. Same thing goes for YouTube. Oh, you could have been streaming. You could be, why aren't you monetizing you doing this thing? Why aren't you doing an IRL stream when you go out to the store? Why aren't you eventually, I mean, what? Like, were we gonna get to that point where the only sustainable way to be a streamer is just to live like a literal like Truman Show type experience? Because yeah, I feel like, holy shit. It's funny because right now, like I said, I'm kind of like trying to write, work on writing this novel. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had to like take some time off of like what I consider to be my work to, to write it. But I know that like either A, I'm not going to be rewarded from that from that, you know, time in the same way. But even if I do manage to sell a bunch of copies of the book, I'm going to sell it through fucking Amazon or something like that. And they're going to fuck me in the same goddamn way. It's just going to be like, hey, who's my new fucking corporate overlord? You know, it's like did you eh. want to did you want to go through Twitch subsidiary of Amazon or did you want to go through Amazon uh, Amazon Kindle subsidiary of Amazon? <laughs> like it's rough, it's bad. Oh man, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah, even if I managed to like yeah, I wrote this book and I fucking you know I sacrificed the time and energy and now it's time to uh, publish it. Let's see, what are my options? Amazon, 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 Amazon. Okay, Amazon. I guess yeah, I'll go with Amazon. That's who to do it. Yeah, that's yep. you got to do it through. So I'm going to fucking, hey, everyone here on YouTube, go to Amazon, buy my book on Amazon. Yay. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I mean, it's I, like, hey, I have such... cog, 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 machine, machine, machine. Yeah. Endless, endless cogging. And and like, it's true. Uh, Like, I, 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 it's something I find unfortunate. And, and I hope that like, I don't know. I'd like to see us like, I'd like to see some solutions. I like to think there's some people who've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. I don't think I got any ideas that are going to save the world, but maybe I can make life a little better for the, the people I know and stuff like that. And I had a video where I fucking delivered a bunch of like things I, I wanted to do. So if, um, if I was president, so they're going to, hey, um, sick. yeah, there's some, you know, just vote for me, write me in or whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, I think, it would be, I think that's a, a great, a great action. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I have my, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think, at this point, I don't know. I don't want to say that I'm like completely black pilled on voting or anything like that. I'm not. I I I do think that that especially local votes can be important for certain things. But like, I just don't think that. I think a lot of people want to sell you the idea that like you can vote your way into a better future. But the reality is like we have failed to do that. We have had that opportunity. Yeah, I to mean, do that for two hundred years and it hasn't. I happened. feel like I feel like like many statements. It's a it's a statement that is technically true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's not practically true. It's not practically true. Yeah, it's like you could like, maybe vote for it, but like, but it's like, like, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, you could, but you don't. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I feel the same way about direct action. Like, we should rise up and stand up. 
Okay, well, we could do that. You're right. There's way more of us than there are them. So, ready? Yeah. No, we're going all. We're going back to work. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Yeah. See, it's funny. Like, uh, it's funny you bring that up. Like, I think one of the interesting things is that, like, I think that sometimes, uh, maybe, maybe this is my time to get a little conspiratorial about the uh, direct action thing. I think some people, uh, th I think a lot of people uh, understand direct action only as like a violent outburst, as that is the only form of direct action. When in reality, that's like not even close to the only form of direct direct action that you can do there is all kinds of ways that you can do direct action that doesn't involve like let's have a revolution let's all gather together and do the revolution now i personally believe that that like revolution we won't it doesn't look like what we think it does like as as i've said i think that the first piece of like anything that will change the world is that we need to get people thinking beyond what the world currently is in its like current state but that said, something that I believe in very much that I know has an impact is stuff like mutual aid projects, which is a, a oh, you got me Tootsie Pops. Oh, sick. I'll take an or a red one. Thank you very much. <laughs> We did a we did a uh, we did a candy tier list review recently on one of my Cooking Mama streams, and uh, Tootsie Pops were way up there on the list because they are they are the goat. They are very good. Um, yeah, I cut myself on a Tootsie Pop once. Yeah, that suck. happens. Yeah. Ah, suck on like yeah, this candy. I ain't, this ain't for me. I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I don't oh, get so down with candy them. that fights back. Yeah, there's a couple of those. I mean, I think that's a problem with lollipops in general because of the way that they uh, the way that they shatter. Which is a little dangerous. Dum Dums are the worst for that, in my experience. But yeah, I think that I think uh, I feel your pain on the Tootsie. Reese's Reese's fucking cups are the best. Fucking candy, whatever. Ooh, ooh, you wouldn't like totally my are. candy tier list then. Ooh, ooh, you would like my. Ooh. Yeah, listen, I have a very uh, listen. I, no, I'm very proud of there's it. There's wait, no, no, wait. There's no, there's no possible objection to the Reese's. Uh, oh, I, 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 know, I, I strongly cup. disagree. Listen, the what's the problem then? So I want to hear listen. this. I want to hear this supposed uh, criticism because I mean, you know what. I ain't never been fucking chewing on Reese people. Ah, oh, I cut my lip because the fucking ah uh, shard. Well, you know? I mean, yeah, that ain't never it, happened. Okay, if your if your main metric for uh for candy goodness is it doesn't cut your tongue, well then perhaps you're correct. It is very mushy and melty. But there's a number of issues in my opinion with the uh, with the Reese cup combination of cups. peanut butter, chocolate, classic fucking flavor combination, and that peanut butter is ninety percent sugar, which is a huge plus. Nah, see that's the downsides. The peanut butter doesn't taste like peanut butter. The chocolate isn't chocolate. It's it's Hershey's vomit flavor. That's crap. that's American chocolate. Whatever. Okay, yeah, but but I rated all Hershey's related chocolates down because I don't care if it's American chocolate. It's bad. It makes me feel sick. It makes it makes my mouth <sighs> taste like vomit. Yeah. See, I, See I, I I like corporate American chocolate. I gotta say. Wow. I can't. I can't handle fan, it. I'm a fan of their but chocolate. I will say the Reese's did get the Reese's cup did get higher than most other chocolates because I do like the peanut butter and chocolate combo. Uh, but my top list was all of the sour candies because America. America is good for some reason at sour candies. I don't know if it's just that we have like a good supply of like citric acid or something, hmm. but those the Sour Patch Kids, unbeatable. They're really good. They're sour. They taste good every time. They're super, super sour, super flavorful. Awesome. I always want every, there's no every sour candy I ever eat. I always wish it was more sour though. I'm always like, why are you pussing out on the sour? It's like if you True. want spicy, you can find stuff that's like painfully spicy, but with sour, it's always like, I guess it's a little tangy. I don't know. I got a few suggestions for you. First off, right. extreme, extreme Sour Patch Kids. Incredibly yeah. good. Yeah. And I love then, those. of course, Warheads are a classic. Um, warheads, warheads are good, but you know what? I always want to make a Warhead. Have they done this yet? Have they done a Warhead that's just like the sour part all the way through? Because I don't. I hate when I was sucking on Warhead and I got that sour, and then all of a sudden I get that generic Jolly Rancher bullshit. I, it's I like don't I don't know. want this anymore. I just you know, spit I don't it know out. If they've done that, I I think Get I agree with you. That's something that I I always I often spit out the 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 um the 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 the, the sweet part as well because it just doesn't do it for me. People say that's a lemon. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, fair. Oh, but dude, lemons. That's are a true. Different, I okay? do suck on lemons, so yeah. yeah I mean, me too. I will take a lemon like, squeeze and just be like, ooh, I love that <sighs> sour. Yeah. So yeah, the, I agree. The, so yeah, the sour candies are pretty good. Uh, I put most of the American chocolates low because I can't handle that vomit like like rotten milk flavor thing that they do. It makes me sick. Um, yeah, but, I wanted to like you, but it's pretty apparent you're some kind of commie that yeah, just doesn't true. like doesn't just, like <laughs> doesn't like, like good a, things. That doesn't like the American rotten milk chocolate. It's true. I don't. You're going uh, on the wall now. Uh, can't I can't well. hang with that. Some it's some uh, some opinions are worth dying for. Okay, I will not. I will go to my. I grave will die on this hill. 
<laughs> yeah, true. I will die. I will die. Uh, not uh, people will have to. They'll, they'll be fighting me like it'll be like the like the torture scene trying to get the, the Hershey's in my mouth. I'm like, no, God. I'm just an idiot for chocolate though. Like fake chocolate, real chocolate, good chocolate, bad chocolate. Like it could be like a shitty. You ever seen those like candies that aren't even like branded or anything? It's just like some fucking third world esque fucking little. You mean like thing a dollar store ra- thing that you find? Or yeah, something? like a yeah. little like something like that, and it's just like wrapped in like colorful foil but it looks cheap and then you open it and it's like the the chocolate is like mostly oxidized and stuff and you're just like yeah i know it's like well it's still fucking chocolate I mean, it's probably better than hershey's that's the way that i look at it so it's like i mean it might literally be rat poison but it's better than hershey's so i put hershey's on the inedible tier like i can't i can't stand eating like plain hershey's it just makes me i just can't oh stand man it. so bad i'll eat it but I'll all right, all. listen. You can take that bullet for me, and uh, I'll give you. you I know, will. I'll trade. I'll trade you uh, whatever. Uh, all your tootsie pops in the post apocalypse. Your tootsie pop thing. I'll trade you on a regular basis for Hershey's. It'll be a perfect. What about trade-off. a tootsie roll? That's at the center of the tootsie pop. See, you no, know, I actually don't like tootsie rolls as much, but the tootsie pop has the right ratio such that I don't really care because I don't really like. I don't think tootsie mm. rolls are that good because they're like they're basically just congealed. tootsie rolls are not that good. Yeah, they're not. They're not. But the thing is, is like the Tootsie Pop, it's like it's just a little bonus. It's not like the main experience. You know, you get to the middle and there's like a little gooey chocolate. You're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's great. But the, the real thing that's enjoyable at the Tootsie Pop is that it's just it's the best of the lollipops. And that's why I gave it such a high rating. I'm not a huge fan of lollipops in general, but this is the best one, in my opinion. I mean, like um, candy kind of becomes irrelevant once you become an adult and can like make brownies and shit. But... True, well, because you can put like weed in your brownies. Like, yeah, or whatever yeah, you like, want. Fuck, yeah, or, or anything, be like yeah. super decadent. I mean, like you could do like a half cookie layer, half brownie layer. You could put pot in it. You could put shrooms put, in it. You can do whatever yeah, you want. You could put fucking caramel or walnuts or whatever, like anything. It's yeah, yeah. it's true. I, I agree with you. And also, like, of course, there you're you're. Your options expand once you move out of the realm of candy. That's why, to me, at the end of the day, the, like, real draw to candy is the sour stuff. Because I I don't feel like you can really get, like, outside of just buying a lemon, um, you know, uh, like, as people have said, uh, so helpful. Lemon bars are pretty easy to make. I love lemon bars. And, Yeah. yeah, they're pretty easy to make. And also, like, but, like... Again, the sour candies are like what I would go to a candy for. I'm not going to – I don't crave candy. I'll go get something like a cake or something. You know, like a fucking ice cream cake? What the fuck? Ice cream cakes are incredible. Ice cream is awesome. Like if you get good ice cream, it's like 100 times better than – it's like 20 candies in one. So like, you know, I feel the candy tier list is like mostly for the – mostly to get people the the, the like – the people. Well, it's really Halloween, so I mean candy. like it's kind of the spirit of the season too. You know? Hey, uh, one second. I'm just going to welcome in this raid real quick. Welcome the Vosh – uh, the the Vosh dot com or Vosh dot GG crew, the VGG crew. Much love to all of you. We are here talking with the one and only, the amazing atheist TJ Kirk. We've been having a great conversation, and we just now uh got into the topic of uh of candies and which ones are the best. So welcome all of you who've arrived. Thank you very much for the raid, Vosh. Uh, all of you uh who are now surging into my Twitch chat, and those of you who are watching on VGG, come over to DemonMama.com forward slash live. It's just like your website. It's built on the same framework. Uh, DemonMama.com forward slash live. You can get all of the emotes. You can come hang out. It's super cool. We would love to have you over here. Uh, much love to all of you and uh, and welcome. So there. There it did my little raid welcome. Um, do you want to talk? Do you want to do a bit about religion? Do you want to talk about religion a little sure. bit? Sure. Because I feel like that would is. be a really great thing to talk about. Because uh, yeah. we've had a fucking great conversation about politics and about corporate America and all that stuff. And I figured it would be cool if we touched on religion. So, you know, you're the amazing atheist. Where where do you stand on religion these days? What do you think about about like the state of? Well, so it's funny because I was, uh, you know, I, I I thought of I thought about it a little more. I was like, you know what? Actually, God is uh, probably real, and um, yeah. that's why I haven't talked about. It. No, uh, exactly the same position I've always had. I am, by the way, uh, I consider myself to be an anti theist, okay, as well as an atheist, which I know some people are not comfortable with going that that far, but I do. That's fair. Um. No, I, I I think that uh, religion is uh, demonstrably harmful in numerous ways, and I think it Christianity is like you, you've heard me talk a lot about psyops that the rich play on the yeah. poor. I think one of the biggest ones they ever conceived of was Christianity. Oh, I agree. With um, you on that. Oh yeah, I mean like it's totally like don't. Oh no no no, <laughs> we're fucking you now in this world, but 
in the next, you, <laughs> it's like, you're going to be in a palace of gold and we'll be all, oh, we're going to be rotten in hell. Easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go to heaven. I'll be down there. Ah, I shouldn't have been so greedy, but you're going to be up there with Jesus. As soon good. as we die, Just so, yeah. after you spend your entire life working for me, then you go up to heaven. You see Jesus. He's going to help you out. It's going to be real good. You're going to get all your rewards Keep after you're dead, hard for Jesus. dead, dead. So, yeah, I mean, it does seem to be like a pacification uh, measure to me. Yeah. So I'm very anti-religion. I did not grow up particularly religious. Um, I was uh, pretty much an atheist from a young age. Um, I Around the same time I stopped believing in Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, mm -hmm. Tooth Fairy, also dismissed religion. Uh, my mom was sad, but didn't really do much about it. Um, you know, it's like, uh, but I always... You know, I've I've grown up in religious areas. I've uh, I have strong ties to the American South, and it's the Bible Belt. And I know a lot of people who very devoutly believe in you know religion. Um, and uh, you know, I, I find it to be stupid and waste of time and energy and effort and et cetera, et cetera. And you know, I've laid that all out. But uh, I understand you had a fraught past with it, and I've definitely met a lot of people with some very intense stories. Yeah, I had a I had a very uh, different I would say a very different um, experience with religion even than yours. Although uh, our conclu our probably uh, conclusions aren't all all that far away. Um, you know the 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 joke being that the best way to become an atheist is to read the Bible. Um, I found that to be quite true. Uh, I I also con I consider myself an atheist. I don't really I don't really know if I would take on the um, position of anti theist though I am incredibly incredibly critical of uh, a lot of organized religion specifically um uh and i talk about a lot like the prosperity gospel um which was you know you know the televangelist the rise of the televangelist and all of these like um like corp like capitalism. jesus said buy me a jet yeah, yeah 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 the capitalism like fused with with christianity in like the most unholy combination you can imagine and like that was the church that was the type of church i grew up in like i grew up in a church that was um way more culty than most of the like televangelists um because it was way they were way more involved in your social life um they they really tampered in the social lives of all of their members um but also like they were the type that they would they they the, you know, they open a new church, and once the church gets a certain number of members, they open a bookstore, they open a cafe, they open a radio station once they get big enough. They start doing all of these things. They have a whole business model for how these churches are constructed, and sure. it all just sort of filters money into this this horrible organization that's basically a, a god corporation. And uh, That yeah, pays no taxes. No taxes, none. Yeah, it's wild how 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 uh, it's wild how much they can they can get away with. Um, the church that I grew up in was very extreme, um, very homophobic, uh, like extremely involved in politics. I think I mentioned that like they encouraged me to go vote in primaries when I was really young, um, and uh, and that's true. They were super super involved in politics, and and in fact, like uh, my the church I belonged to was, I wouldn't say single handedly, but the major player in delaying. Um, the legalization of gay marriage in my home state. So, uh, yeah, like my position on, I have a whole video on this called uh, Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction, which tells the whole story of like how my family got into this cult and all this sort of, sort of shit like that, how I got out of it. Because I had a very, I think, um, weird path on how I sort of left that space. And I was very, very devout. Like, so in your, in, in your position, you say like, oh, you didn't, you didn't, you stopped believing in God very early on. That was not true for me. For me, I didn't stop believing in God until I was like 19 was when, and I was very devout. I was a true believer. Like I believed in all of it. And, uh, and like, I, I feel like I was, um, you know, very, uh, very smart. I did well, very good in school. I learned a lot. I excelled in, in school, um, and all of that. And I loved learning, but I had accepted the, the worldview and I'd been indoctrinated to such a degree that it like, it eventually did cause like a lot of internal mental strife. And, uh, yeah, I have a lot of critiques of religion. My current position on religion is like, I don't know. Um, I've found that like, I've moved away from like where I was 
uh, I would say like a decade ago was when I really got into like the, the, uh, like a lot into atheism because that was when I was leaving the church and when I, you know, had discovered I was trans and, um, I watched a lot of like, um, you know, like ZJ, I, I, I watched, a ton, I watched a ton of your videos back in like 2010 or something even like, I remember I was really into that and I gained so much from that. I watched a lot of Matt Dillahunty. Uh, of course, I've seen basically everything that Christopher Hitchens has ever done. And, um, so a lot of those people were very inspiring to me though. I think I'm, I think I'm not quite in the same position that they are. Uh, I think I've sort of moved my critiques to focus more on like traditionalism and dogma as forces, as opposed to like religion as the core force that I fixate on. Um, and I think some well, of that that's is kind of what happened with me too, is like, I realized that like I had to broaden my focus because religion, while it is like a major sort of strain of irrationality, like the, mm -hmm. like a vein of irrationality that goes, travels through our culture. It's not really the main vein. <laughs> or if it is, if it is, there's like a lot of like offshoots and interconnected, like, you know, sort of like irrational positions that people take. And, you know, like Jesus is not the only thing people take on faith in this country. We talked about earlier about conservatives and how everything is like working back from a premise. Exactly. Um, yeah. And or from a conclusion. And every piece of evidence is just, you know, if it supports the conclusion, it's it's accepted. If it doesn't, it's rejected. Religious thinking breeds that sort of thing, but it's not the only place where you see that. Um, it seems like there's a lot of dogmatic thinking that occurs in multiple sectors of the culture, which is one of the reasons why I've tried to broaden it. But like, it's also why I never really thought, um, well, I guess I did drop the atheism thing, but it was more of a, a YouTube thing because I heard that YouTube was going to be tough on the term and I was oh. trying to fucking work on getting monetization, but... I decided to fucking just say fuck it because I'm like, whatever. But, but like, as far as it goes, like the reason I'm able to still just be like the amazing atheist, even though I don't really talk much about religion is because I kind of view it all as sort of tying in together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that makes sense. Like, uh, one of the, th I, I gained a lot from like understanding skepticism and obviously, you know, there's a lot of critiques for the directions that skeptic communities online went, but skepticism as a concept, I think is very, very valuable um, because it does teach you not just to deal with like one type of, of like uh, indoctrination or, or, or ideological programming, but it, it teaches you to be critical of all types or, or it can at least I think. And uh, yeah. So like, I, I feel like there like there's so much to talk about and it's something that i try to talk about a lot because i do talk about religion frequently you know i have a lot of critiques like i like the state of, of religion in america is horrifying right like the fact that like the religious right is like largely spinning into QAnon, and that QAnon has like pseudo christian elements that are like wrapped in it's so fucked excuse me what really so strikes me is is uh, so crazy is just how little it bears any resemblance to the the texts yeah I, um, I joke frequently i did i have a new segment that i started after i came back see this big old bible this was my old bible when i was a kid the comparative study bible it still has all my notes in it um and i've read it a million times but i did this new segment that was called D uh, bible study with demon mama and uh and the last one was uh d what does god think about shoplifting and so i did a whole thing that basically finding finding quotes in the bible that could be that you could talk about oh god approves of of, of of shoplifting or does not frown upon it and so i have a whole lot of ideas for that of like ways to illustrate the fact that like these books can really be used in a lot of ways um but i just and feel like if you look at the overarching message of jesus yeah. which is supposedly the foundational figure the highest good moral exemplar and you know there's certain there's certain aspects of jesus teachings i look at and i say like oh that's really terrible mm. but there's also aspects i look at and say oh yeah 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 that's like very reasonable and makes sense and it's like you know uh charity and love and compassion and things of that nature and uh it's like okay wow yeah you know helping each other and you know not not falling into the the pitfalls of hatred for your fellow man and things of that like that and you know I can't do it, but hey, you know, it's a nice little aspiration. Sure. But um, uh, I don't see, you know, and then you see these Christians, like, it's like you have a book where the main teacher is like, give all your money to the poor, and <laughs> they've somehow been convinced to give all their money to mega churches and charlatans and hucksters that need private jets and big mansions and, you know, fucking palatial uh, uh, escapes with golf courses and 
you know, sunny beaches and cheating on their, uh, you know, fake TV wives and, you know, whatever the hell else is going yeah. on. And it's it's like, you know, how did this text morph into this reality? It's almost like it just doesn't matter. Like people like you haven't have you read, you know, I have people like you read the whole Bible. It's like, no, not really. I've read a few things here and there, but honestly, like Christianity today barely has anything to fucking do with the goddamn Bible. It doesn't. It has almost nothing. I mean, like, there's so many aspects of it. It's funny you mentioned, like, the, the palatial estates and all that stuff. Like, that was actually something that that was a, a big part of me originally, like, not leaving religion in whole, but leaving the church that I was involved in. It was because I remember, like... I, I was in college, I'd gone to college for one year and I went back for Christmas and my dad was like, oh, we got to go to this big church service. And it was at, it was at one of the, um, like bigger churches than, than my branch was. Cause my branch was big for the area, but it was nothing compared to some of these big city ones. So we went to one of the big city churches and we went there and they had this whole video, highly video produced intro where, uh, you know, they were talking about, oh, we need to raise money and all this stuff, like donate your money here. And I was just sitting there and I had this moment where I was looking around and I had been going to film school. So like I had been learning a lot and I saw these film cameras that they were filming it with. I'm like, that is a $500,000 camera and they have 10 of them. And then I look over and they're, they've imported snow into Florida for the, the, the Jesus Saves Winter uh, Festival. And I'm like, and this is right next to them uh, pl playing a thing about how they need you, everybody, to give their money together so they can save some starving children or whatever. And I'm like, but why do you need $500,000 cameras, all this shit? Why do you need these giant light show, all of this, this stage? Like, none of this is, like, you could do this all with less and you could put more. And I just realized, oh, God, like, this is a grift. This is a, a, a this is a, a business that's been made out of religion and and yeah it's really gross and it doesn't resemble anything because it's like Jesus Christ would have fucking smashed your cameras like like he, he, like you fucking flipped the tables in the temple because they were charging for sacrificial animals like what are you talking about so yeah it is like weird. how many how many fucking um <laughs> yeah, how many fucking starving people could you feed with the what you spent on that camera you know it's exactly. Like <laughs> Even if they just had, you could even say, like, even if you had one $500,000 camera, you could be like, okay, you need your nice camera so you can send out your word. But they had, like, an army of this with paid camera techs with a whole production team. It's like, this is like a Hollywood production. There's so much money here. This guy's a millionaire, and he's living on a literal urban palace that is devoted to his ministry. And, of course, uh, he ended up becoming, getting disgraced when it turned out that he had, like, a harem of women. Um... Yeah, so that well, was he could have just he could have he could have justified that biblically too. Be like, look, it's like I'm I'm like Solomon, yeah, you know? like Solomon. Yeah, it didn't work. Too Remember well, Solomon? Though, but I mean, see, honestly, they could it could be see, they better. Just, but so you know what? It's the problem. The problem is that it's another fucking brilliant innovation of Donald Trump. See, these guys used to be able. They used to think like, oh man, I'm disgraced now. Yeah. You know, they found out about my harem. It's like, no, nah, dude, you don't fucking ever apologize for shit. Trump yes. proved you don't. Trump proved they'll accept anything. So you to. just go out there and be like. Yeah, I do have a harem, but that's because Jesus wants me to have a harem. Just like he wanted Solomon and King David to have harems. It's a and sign. It's a like, sign. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Maybe I could be like that someday. I'm going to join up with the ministry. In fact, in fact, John, Jonathan, out there, bring Betsy Lou up here. I'm going to fuck Betsy Lou in front of the whole congregation. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's kind of like, that's kind of like, uh... <laughs> just like, everyone just sits there like, is this okay? It's like, this is what God wants, y'all. Everyone right, bow well, your head and is, mm. I'm feeling uncomfortable right now, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you this money shot. <laughs> you like that part? <laughs> okay, by the way, I have a video of mine that I, I hate to, to, be, to be this kind of person, but you got to check out my fucking Bible fuckability terror list. It is so up your alley. Listen, I did a video where I, I was a little drunk on stream and everybody goaded me into doing a Bible fuckability tier list. And it took like two hours of us going through every character in the Bible. And I have read the entire Bible like four or five times through. It's ridiculous. Like I have so much Bible knowledge. So we rated all of the characters on this giant fuckability tier list. And we went all into detail, like talking about their story stories what would make them this way or that it was, it was so much fun i have a feeling you'd love it uh it is it is horrific it is so sacrilegious um which is like i don't know it's, it's so much fun it, it you know it's really wild to me like uh i find it it's so frustrating to me too because like 
to be <laughs> to be in a position of like of like the anti religion thing. Like yeah, I I I get I. I get it. I get being like all the way into the anti-theist position where it's like, this shit is just so toxic. And, and like on one hand, I'm like, yeah, like I get that completely because yeah. American like Christianity is so fucking gaudy and, and unapologetically horrible and monstrous that I'm just like, wow. Like, and then you look and you see, oh, well, Catholicism did the same fucking shit. And that like, that like, there are a hundred thousand structures in Islam that do the exact same thing. Basically, every religion has some version of this. And then I see other things and I'm like, mm, the only thing that holds me back is like, I see that like, uh, that like a lot of religious groups, that there are genuine religious groups that do, that are able to use religion or not even to use religion, but that genuinely engage in religion and are able to do so and provide community in a way that like a lot of like, a lot of even lefties fail at doing like, oh, um, yeah. like I think right now, like here in, in where I live in Seattle, there's like multiple Sikh temples and like the Sikh temples have a thing that they do where, uh, on their nights of service, they serve meals for everyone there. You do not have to stay for the serv service. You can just come in and anybody who comes in gets a meal. No questions asked. They don't invade your life. They just say, you want a meal? Here's some rice. Here's some curry. Here's some, whatever they have that they're serving that night. And, and that provides a genuine sense of, of community that people can't find in a lot of other places. And I wish that more religion could be like that. And I know there are forms of religion that are like that, um, sure. which is why I tend to sort of tailor my critique to being more about like dogma and 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 which I do think is a very bad thing. I think that like rules that. Cannot... But I feel like I feel like here's the problem with with that, though, it's like. Sure. To, to push back on the point a little bit yeah. is, uh, you know, you have this act of goodwill, right? Mm. You know, you're being fed by religion. You're being fed by Christianity. You're being fed by Islam or whatever the fuck, whatever's feeding you. Some, some, some ideology is giving you a free meal or helping you out or whatever, showing you this great spirit of charity. Sure. Well, you know, I mean, like, then, you know, you're all the more primed for the grifter to come along down the line and be like, remember time Christianity gave you a sandwich? Now he wants you to give me to give me a jet. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like, yeah, and I, I mean, that is it's true. Like, too, but, because... I mean, if we could just like admit that, you know, the charity is not coming from God. If it was coming from God, it would just be bestowed upon you through magic. It's been given to you by people who pulled their resources together and did something great now. Maybe secular people need to get better about forming those sort of communal bonds without the presence of religion, because as yeah. long as that element of irrationality is there, there's always going to be people who can, because like, it's just too tempting to manipulate. If you have a bunch of people that buy into the notion that there's an invisible fucking dude that controls the universe yeah. and that someone can talk to him, there's, that's just like, that has to be challenged, I think, on a fundamental level because it's just so easy to fucking abuse that power. If you can, if people are already primed to believe God, primed to believe that God communicates to man, primed to believe there are certain people through whom God is an instrument, then yeah. all the more primed are those people to be deceived, to be, uh, you know, tricked into a, taking a path of fucking hatred that has no basis in reason tricked into supporting you know monstrous policies that are against their own fucking social and economic interests all in the name of this or that or the other thing and it's just like you know i feel like you have to you have to take it on on every level in every fucking stage it has to be like there's not that yeah. you know there's no there is no ultimate big kahuna in the sky that gets to decide who's really right. Yeah. We got to figure this out amongst ourselves. This is all that we like as far as we know we're the highest power. If there's something else out there, it'll present itself, then we'll figure it out then. But for yeah. now, we're the highest power and it's up to us to figure this shit out. And yeah, I think and that I do think that's it's an abdication too, yeah. and it's also a, a prime for manipulation. It's like you're an anarchist, I aspire to be an anarchist. We know that one of the reasons that hierarchies are so fucking dangerous and so deadly is they codify this person above the other. Yeah. And it's like human beings can't be trusted with that. Um, and I will say that the structure of many of, of like many or if not 
most organized religions do do fall directly into that i mean like the, oh, yeah. the most obvious example of course is like the the christian uh the christian missionary who comes with a bible and a bowl of food and says oh yeah my home country probably led to the you know the devastation of your country in some ab abstract way but i'll give you this bowl of food if you take my bible and if you let me indoctrinate you and i, I think that is just sick it's something that makes me disgusted i i am very very worried about like missionaries and i i i i find myself in a position where i'm like i wonder if there isn't a way for religion or spirituality to be expressed to be engaged with that doesn't that doesn't ultimately lead to these and it's a very difficult question i don't know that i don't know that there is <clears throat> because i think you, that uh what you've said is like uh about like specifically about like the abdication is is tr it's true like the religion uh, like religions like of course there are all kinds of ways we can do this i like obviously i do think that secular people can do this too um for example people abdicate to the state all the time they're like oh well you know it's not my problem yeah yeah there's there's a concentration camps on the borders but you know w we just need to vote it well it's their problem that's because we had a bad person in office and i like, voted for biden what, what do you want me to do yeah what do you want exactly it. it's an abdication and like i do agree that that exists very strongly in religion and that does worry me because it's like if you if you encourage the idea that like that like it's okay to sort of like unchallengingly believe in in some sort of or un, or undevotedly believe in some sort of higher power that's gonna do it but i just i don't know like uh the part that gets to me is like i i want to believe i guess it's that i want maybe it's i want to believe i don't know i want to believe that there is a form of that there is a form of belief, that there is a way for people to have, you know, uh, un not necessarily proven, but like, but like beliefs that that they can't necessarily always explain to everybody with perfect accuracy, which I think everybody has to some degree. That that can be en enjoyed and used to guide your view symbolically in healthy ways, much like how we use art. You know, I like maybe that's just my problem. Maybe I just like see a lot of like the ideal form of religion as basically serving as a form of art um, and not really as like a literally accepted. Uh, well, that's what you know, Nietzsche proposed as the cure for for nihilism. Basically, yeah. it was like, well, God's dead, but maybe we can find it in art. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's a powerful sentiment. But, you know, there's just there's a lot of people who are not particularly moved by art. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, if they are, it's, you know, I don't know. You, you still have the same problems ultimately because you can use art to push whatever agenda you want to. And, you know, it's not well, also, as powerful I, as a. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Also, the problem is, is that like, it just doesn't, it doesn't hit as hard. You, you watch right, a like, great, great film and it's like, wow, that was emotionally moving and powerful. But at the end of the day, it's like, it doesn't have the same power as being. Well, like, I mean, yeah, you can God do, I mean, you can there. do, you can create a really powerful, moving, stirring piece of art that speaks to the human soul, but that, you know, it, well, it turns out it's fucking triumph of the will or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's possible too. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's like, wow, this is really powerful, moving stuff. I'm a Nazi too. It's like, oh, okay. Well that backfired. Oops. Art yeah. sucks as well. Um, well, no, art, you know, I, I like art, though. I mean, yeah. art's beautiful and shit, but it, I don't know if it's the solution to, I don't know if, it's, if it fills the, the role you're looking for. Yeah. To me, it's all just like nihilism. I can't, I can't conceive of it. I can't conceive of, uh, maybe just a lot of drugs. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> People just do I mean, shrooms. I love, I love drugs. I mean, don't well, I'll tell you what, I did, uh, you know, I, I did some shrooms and I laid in bed and I closed my eyes and I felt at one with the universe and it felt nice. So, I mean, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's the answer. Just yeah. do some shrooms. I mean, Close I mean, your I, eyes. Like, unironically, I do think that there is, um, like, I think there is, like, uh, some of these things get, like, religiousified when, in reality, it's, like, not, it's not even a supernatural thing. Like, there is a material process by which if you take mushrooms and you have a, a sense of, of being connected and you take, and it, it encourages you to take time to think about that connection. That's a material process. That's not a religious process. It's not a supernatural process at all. It's a very natural process. And I think that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like, I guess there's, there's stuff that I, that even after all of my thinking about atheism and all of my thoughts about religion, there are still unanswered like conclusions that I have about it. And in the meantime, like in the way that I engage in politics, I, I, I like, I never want to like, I, I never want to just have like someone's sincerely held religious beliefs <coughs> block them from like 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 be the only reason why they don't consider 
like, or the main reason why they don't consider a viewpoint, you know what I mean? And so sometimes I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to talk about, I want, I want people who have a genuine, like people who are in my position where I was before I left the, before I left religion, where it was like, I do genuinely believe this, but I am very critical. I was at a, like, again, I left the church before I left religion. So I want, I really hope that, that like, I want, I want to hope that there's a way to reach that type of person and that maybe there is a type of person who can, you know, sort of believe in, in a religion and still not, I don't know, just fall back into sort of like the, uh, the stereotypes that we think of when we think of like, you know, the worst types of Christians, the most, the fundamental. I mean, I definitely think there's people who are religious who have, you know, who can embody those, those better values and who are just like more about the actual spirit of Christianity of, you know, charity and compassion and forgiveness and all that stuff. Um, but you know, it seems like that's like not the, the predominant the Christian yeah. that I see. For sure. Um, oh, for sure with Christianity. Like, I think there's like, I think there's parts of Christianity itself. Like, like I would say like of all, of all of the religions that I'm like most like willing to go to the anti-theist position on, it's like cr Christianity is like one of those, like where I'm just like, like Christianity is from the, from the very basis, a religion that is very <coughs> hierarchical. Like there's almost no way to avoid that. Like you, you can't get many non-hierarchical solutions out of the Bible. Like you can, you can stretch a little bit. You can come up with like liberation theology, but at the end of the day, you're still under God and that is, and God still imposes a, a hierarchical order on the universe, which affects, affects the moral conclusions of that religion. So I, 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 I'm like, yeah. And then, but, but then I also look at things like, um, on the other hand, like I look at like the, um, like a lot of like Jewish uh, communities in America, like not not Orthodox, but like re Reform or or I said Reform, I can't remember. Uh, non Orthodox, the 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 non Orthodox uh, position. Like I worked for a, a, a synagogue for a while, and like the vast majority of what they did was just teach people cool cool stuff. And there was like a there were some like sort of like religious teachings that were involved in that, like the sort of values of like what what is like a mensch or whatever, like what makes a good person good. And there's some religious like stuff in there and maybe some dated stuff but like the vast majority of what they did was was provide community and it's a very different structure of religion and so i wonder if maybe if religion was structured differently and not so fundamentalist but maybe it just inevitably does because of its structure. But i still feel like even if, if you're looking at an instance like that it's like yeah it's fostering community and all this but like it's just like we're jews you know <laughs> and it's yeah. almost more like we are members of this tribe and it's almost like I don't want to, I guess it'd be offensive to call it racism, but it's like, you know, it's kind of like pushing in that direction where it's like here, we're all joined by this, this common thread of yeah, like, there's like a tribal. We come from this, you're saying we come from the same tribe in Israel. Therefore yeah. we share something, um, hmm. you know, and I, I don't and know. Yeah, I mean, like, I can see those, I, my, those restrictions. Yeah. My aspiration, I guess would be like, I want to be a humanist. I can't quite bring myself to be a humanist. I want to be able to say that I have faith in, like, human beings to solve these problems. But I guess I, I guess the closest I can come is saying I'm a transhumanist. Yeah. Saying that I think that maybe one day humanity will be able to upgrade and augment itself sufficiently that maybe we won't be as stupid as we are now. <laughs> and then we can solve I these problems. So. I, I mean, I would love a future where humans can be real, like realistically augmented. I just feel like uh, all of that technology right now in the current order of the world, if we keep on this trajectory, like we said before, I feel it's all going to end up like, like being like some, some Bezos type who's just going to be able to buy all of the, like, sure. He'll be able to turn himself into like the, the emperor from maybe it'll from, fucking uh, backfire on him. He'll be like, I will now be the smartest being in the fucking universe. He'll like, give himself the serum and shit yeah. yes yes the nanobots fucking you know give him this deep super dense neural network now his iq is like 792 and shit he's like wait i have been a fool all this time putting you know he'll, yeah. he'll have like the i've been an idiot moment. yeah wow i was this is horrible <laughs> the world we've created is a nightmare i see now i i i would love oh man give my wealth great. to the people <laughs> But what? Right. But see, this is where it gets scary too, because it's like, okay, so what happens? So what happens if the people developing that technology realize that if you give like a human un like unconditioned intelligence, that like they'll realize that like 
the the path to this was horrible and they'll go against like whatever structure exists so they're just like no actually we're going to program intelligence with this one like very very well hidden uh you know uh, conclusion where it's like oh yeah you always conclude to be like tur turbo capitalist god emperor because this is like ah yes we we programmed a a logical fault that you'll never notice into your 9000 IQ like like it's that whole thing of like the AIs that are racist like they're racist because we program we unintentionally program them to be racist like like what if that happens but with like with like brain power so it's like ah yes we've <laughs> given you the plug into your brain but you could your conclusion is that you become the god emperor from fucking warhammer 4 40k i don't know it's like a basilisk i guess yeah or what if they what if it just what if they all just kill themselves at that point they're like ah oh, no i see the meaninglessness of it all uh, boom oh Head no blows up. yeah got it's some like, oh, shit. It's like blood some bloodborne stuff going on ah no the i've, I've created the most painful the, the being in the most pain in the universe me <laughs> <They disappear. laughs> Well, uh, TJ, it's been awesome. This uh, is dumb. Why would that happen? I don't know, Bob. Ho I don't know, Bob Pope. Why would it happen? <laughs> yeah, why? Why? You? F why don't you think on that? That's your question of the day. You can think about it all day and all night. Yeah, come up to the come rest up, of your yeah, life. Why would this happen? I can give you a lot of reasons why it would happen. Why do you think it's happened in the past? Why do you think we had the Gilded Age, where like literally, like, uh, like J D Rockefeller is like riding around on like a a, a a horse that's been cast in gold through his peacock farm, while like across America, <laughs> there's like hundreds of thousands of people dying in like the Dust Bowl and shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, why would we do this? I don't know. Why have we done this before? Why do we have kings who have who like in the past who had so much riches that they could literally buy other countries and like we're like oh yeah this is fine like i don't know why why do we do any of this shit there's so many better ways we could do it well the answer is because they want their fucking gold and they'll pay a guard to keep it there's there's how it goes because none of us will take it back that's how it goes that's the real reason anyway yeah, well, TJ, we've been talking for a long time. I've been really, really, really loving it. I'm going to have to go eat dinner relatively soon. Uh, yeah. Is there any last memes you wanted to touch on? Because this has been a fucking fantastic conversation. I've really, really <laughs> loved talking with you. Um, Last memes. Yeah, do you want to um, like, grill me on any of my cancellations or something? Like, what do you want? Do you want to get like a Demon Mama unique thing? You want to ask me a question that it's not that's it's that would normally not be allowed through the the Iron Curtain of this of this particular internet SJW censor hound or whatever I am. Mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> not really. I don't know. I don't, have, I don't even Sick. know. I all I know is that uh, you talk like a supervillain. True. Apparently, I do. And, uh, <laughs> I like that, and uh, you know, I don't know. Just keep pissing people off because that's always fun. Gladly, I will. That is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and I, I hope know. that uh, you know. I hope you find. I hope you figure out uh, what what you can have faith in because I I don't know. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. I don't know if I really have faith. I think I think the only thing I have. I don't think I have faith in anything anymore. I think I I have trust in people. Like you know, like people that are close to me. And I, like, I have a way of, you know, I have my sort of ways of, of establishing trust. I don't know that I really have faith in much. Maybe like, maybe I would say the biggest thing that I have faith in is, uh, like change, change always happens. And so nothing ever remains the same forever, even if it seems impossible. And I, I think that's a very morally neutral type of faith because it's like change isn't always necessarily good, but it always happens, which means like. There's always potential. There's always something that could change. And if we can influence the change, then maybe we can make it better. I guess that's the only thing I really have faith in. Trust, yes. I believe very strongly in trust. I think that, like, uh, strengthening bonds between people and, like, getting to know people and experiencing things with them so that you can have, like, an established history of knowing one another and on an intimate level. Like, that is something I very strongly believe in. You know, I mean... I guess that's kind of the foundation of like anarchist thought, right? It's like this idea of like you build bonds with people and those bonds are powerful. And, uh, and from those bonds, we can understand that other people also do that, that they build their bonds and they take care of their people and that we can reach harmony by recognizing that and working together and building bonds with one another and respecting our mutual interconnections. Uh, you know, that's sort of the, 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 the foundational, you know, brick of that, that social aspect of like the stuff that's like anarchism or communism even. So I do believe in that, but, but yeah, I just feel like, uh, I guess that my final thought on it would just be that, uh, you know, I, I like the idea, but I just don't know that I have the trust. 
I feel like I don't see it in us, but you hope mean I'm like, wrong. You mean like what? The ability for us to make a better society? No, the ability, just not the will. The will, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, you know, and, and I can actually give you a couple. I'll give you a recommendation. I think I'll give you one recommendation to start off with, and then if you like it, um, then maybe you can follow up with me or whatever. Hit me up for the second recommendation. The first one is a book called Desert by Anonymous. It's super easy read. Sit down and read it. It is a eco-nihilist's, uh, a eco-nihilist uh, uh, text uh, a book um, and it's really really good um, I've literally seen people uh, linking like like graffitiing read desert with a, with a, with a little QR code that you can go scan it and it'll take you to the free version of it online it's I've anonymously it. published yeah it's really good um, I highly recommend giving that a read it talks about um, you know coping with being an eco an eco nihilist and and recognizing like oh wow we might be fucked i think the first line of the book is we're fucked um and i think it might it might speak to you like it did to me because i i feel that way a lot and of course you know i think a lot of times we get stuck in this um this view of like okay the whole world will become this one utopia whereas i think that maybe that's not super realistic but i think that we can have um we can make things better in certain places and we can share that knowledge freely and other people may choose to adopt those things and iterate and make them better and maybe we'll learn from those people and perhaps you know with a lot of uh willingness to experiment and willingness to like try new things and 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 be bold in in what we really want the world to be like live how we really want to live maybe we can actually start to inspire that across the world. And it may not be some single unified movement. There may not ever be like the society that clicks over into like a, a, the, the perfect anarchist society, but we may see better societies arise, inspire other ones, and slowly and surely the world together becomes a better place. I hope so. I hope. That's what I like to think of. And I can understand, though, exactly where you're coming from when you say I think people are stupid because Americans have the weakest souls on the planet and they're the most frustrating people to talk to politically. <laughs> Well, I think we can leave it at that. Thank you for having this conversation with me. Anytime. I appreciate your perspective, and uh, I'll try to read Desert. Although, <laughs> I'll, we'll see. It's short. Yeah. It's short and inspiring. And uh, and I is it shorter than my attention span? Though that's the real question. You might be surprised. There is an right. audiobook version of it. That's how I All listen right. to it because I can't read shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, TJ. Thank you so much for coming on. It was fucking awesome. Thank you for having me on, thank on you. Uh, your show. And uh, everybody, yeah. go give uh, The Amazing Atheist a follow on all the social media. You got uh, The Amazing Atheist, right, is your your Twitter. Uh, you can search Amazing They're Atheist. They're all linked in the description of The Amazing Atheist videos. You can check it out there. And we have them. Um, yes. <laughs> so oh, yeah. They They're there as well. Yep. So, yeah. And, uh, of course, same for Demon Mama. Check her shit out everywhere that she's got social media. I got the link to her website down below, so you can check that out. All my links are on the website. So thank you very, very much. And uh, let's uh, maybe we'll talk again in the future. That would be fucking awesome. I really enjoyed this. Oh, so, yeah, uh, for sure. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye. Damn. Damn. What a great conversation. Wow. Wow. That was so good. That was such a good conversation. Oh, my God.